Oh, yes, yes. Okay, well, hello, Brittany's stream and audience, of which I have been a part for years now. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm Z, or my channel's called Kidology. I've been making YouTube videos for a couple of years now, and this is now my job. I live in the UK. I'm from South Africa, however. And yes, I like to just talk about what I just very euphemistically call modern life. Just anything that's really quite topical with um, our generations right now. So uh, yes, yes. Uh, I'm not terribly interesting other than that. Sort of YouTube is my life at this point. But yes, yes. I, how, I enjoy how, conversations. How old are you? I'm 25. Okay. And then I, I'm going to be real with you. I was kind of shook when you said you had been watching me for a while because a part of my brain, I feel like I'm just like the weird friend everybody has on YouTube where I'm always at the parties, but nobody knows why I'm there. And I never know why people follow me. I, I, even though I believe in my work and I think it's great. I also know, I also know it's for like a really niche audience. And mm -hmm. so I look at you as someone who's kind of and again, just like in a completely different bubble than I am, but then at, not yeah. at the same time because we overlap so much with our work. Like I'm always seeing your videos. I'm watching them now. I Ever since I mm -hmm. saw you on my live stream, I like reviewed you and then I just never stopped watching you. And so like I've been keeping up with your work. I've really enjoyed your, your work on incels. Your call-in shows have been great to listen to. And so I've enjoyed mm -hmm. all of that. But I always saw you as somebody who is more like in the sort of like academia bubble, but that might be incorrect. Hmm. Interesting. <clears throat> I think I have my days when I aspire to be in that bubble, mm. but at the same time, because I haven't gotten my master's or a PhD, I don't feel a part of that bubble. And also Fair. I have a lot of qualms with academia. I think academia is very, very exclusive, very much sort of a bubble where we're the experts, we know everything, mm -hmm. and we sort of get you and I don't think that's the case <clears throat> I think that's definitely that was actually when I was at uni I started watching you just because I mean I was obsessed with like uh Trisha Paitas and everything yeah. and then sort of a video of yours <laughs> popped up yeah about Trisha and also about Moses yes. and I then just went deep into your content and I think seeing you with the levels mm. and how you just articulate yourself and speak about the world and just your experiences and your life and your family, especially. I think that really opened my eyes to how actually it isn't all about academia and that bubble. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't, that doesn't give you any sort of uh, knowledge that is exclusive to you. That doesn't, yeah. It really doesn't matter as much at all in so far as how you see the world and other people. So I think that was, that got me out of sort of that bubble of academia, sort of like washed me out of it a bit, mm -hmm. of, out of that womb. And that was very helpful in getting from a point of being in academia, then not having enough money to, uh, and having all of that falling through and yeah. having to immerse myself in the real world again. And sort of being very scared of that, very not having been in that world for years. And the levels really helped me with that and with actually trying to navigate the chaos and myself and realizing that I'm, I'm not really the shit in the way that I sort of thought I was at uni. Didn't we all? And having to, <laughs> yes, and sort of having to really just introspect a lot. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay, first of all, like super emotional for me because like I really appreciate my work and I appreciate when other people appreciate it just because it really helped me. Like I had to create my work yeah. to help myself, which was kind of funny, right? Because yeah. um, there wasn't the resources that I needed in every uh, bubble I was visiting. They gave me a lot of wisdom though. But mm -hmm. I still needed something else, like maybe a different wording or maybe to counter that ego. Like I remember my therapist, the one I loved, told me like, yeah, you can't save the world. I was like, are you sure? Because I was educated in America where they told me I was the next Martin Luther King Jr. So, so you want to, you want to update yourself therapist? And she's like, do you want to update yourself? And I was like, okay. 
And so like she had to really ground me. She had to really ground me and tell me like, girl, you are not going to save the world. But that was truly yeah. not what I was learning growing up my whole life. I was learning that I was a Tumblr goddess, that I was, a, you know, going to change the world by either like being a conservative when I was with the Republicans or like, you're so smart. You're going to bring the world to the right. And then when I was at the left, they're like, yes, like another fierce, aggressive woman, like making it clear, debating these men, debating Carl, you know, uh, Benjamin, Car uh, Carl, oh my God, Carl Benjamin you know, Sargon of Akkad, like, you yes, know, and yes. I'm, but then overall, as I was there in those circles, I wasn't as satisfied with the work as I thought I should have been. Yes. And so there wasn't a joy there. And that's what made me wonder, like, what am I doing? Which is why I left YouTube for six months, like after a whole debacle. I'm, I guess you would know about it, I suppose. Yes, but just like a yes, whole thing yes. with my stalker and everything. I left. Mm. And then I came back. And now I'm on thi in this area of YouTube with you and Steven and Kyla and everyone else. And I'm wondering why. And I wonder if it's the same for you. This feels a lot better. A yes. lot more grounded. Why do you think that is? Hmm. Interesting question. I think it's because there's there's never a point where I sort of think, okay, I know everything that there is to know about everyone who I'm talking to, everybody who I'm seeing, and I sort of have it all worked out. I have sort of a map of objectivity of mm. what is the right thing for everybody, not just myself, but for everybody. Mm -hmm. And sort of having to really, it's sort of a lot of work, just a lot of mental work, just navigating, okay, why do people see the world in the way that they do? And why don't I see it that way? Mm -hmm. And there's always, there's just always something to learn. There's always something to see in just, I mean, the communities on YouTube, on Twitter, everything is just anarchy. But it also is just also very much reality. I think you've said like a lot that sort of the world is chaos and that is just inevitable. Yeah. And that that is sort of just something that you need to face rather than trying to sort of fix that or believing mm. that you can fix that and I think that was something that I had to learn after sort of my world went up in shambles after university and my funding falling through suddenly mm. there wasn't sort of that plan yeah and at first I was blaming the world oh it's the world's fault like there's no meritocracy like it's because I'm an ethnic minority it's this institutionalized racism structural inequalities all of these things and it was it was helpful for a while sort of like um a placebo effect mm. but then in the long term it just didn't add up it didn't come together in a yeah. satisfactory way that in any <clears throat> way gave me sort of drive or purpose or a purpose to sort of keep going on with life to sort of realize okay this happened but now something else is going to happen and I can do something else and I can sort of go on um and find meaning in other things yeah um, and so yeah yeah I think that's so I've gone on a whole scenic route here. I, I think figure we will, girl. <laughs> P.S. I figure our talk yes. now will just be that. But if you want to derail, let me know, because I have a follow up question to what oh, you yes. just said. So go, oh, go, yes. go. Oh, yes. Yeah. So so I think that was. That's really why I think I've sort of really uh, found myself, I guess, at home a bit more with creators such as yourself, such as uh, Not So Erudite, Kyla. Um, I would say I haven't ever spoken to Destiny, but in terms of Destiny you haven't, content, what he says, no, I haven't. Why does um, everyone think you've? Because everyone was like, "Haven't you heard her talk to Steve?" And I was like, "I think I have." And everyone has this like, <laughs> "Have you not?" No, I mean it's a dream of mine, but I'm also I'm also very very passive. Mm. Like I've wanted to talk to you for ages, <laughs> and like you know, whenever I check my emails, I'm like, oh, scrolling through, and then when your email came through I was like oh my goodness it's I'm happened so passive in that's so interesting I never make the first move so yes I'm um, so glad I did I'm so glad I did girl I'm I so have been I've been telling my audience I was like I'm gonna hit this girl up give me a second I try to only hit the like contact content creators that I 
have an idea of what I want to talk to them about instead of just like mm -hmm. um, just having them on to have them on, I think would be really boring. But I've, yes. I've been watching your content. I've been consuming it pretty regularly. And something that stood out to me is that I don't know exactly where to place you sometimes. And mm -hmm. so, like, I look at Abba and Preach, and it's pretty clear, like, I know where you've come from. I could tell you your whole life story. And, like, I appreciate where you've ended up. Like, I really like Abba and Preach, and I love my, like, my friendship with Abba and everything. Yeah. And I hope to have one with Preach mm -hmm. maybe in the future. But I really appreciate them. And you can see where they've, like, how they've grown and where they've come from. Like, it's amazing to me. Yeah. You know, their story makes sense. Even Kyla, like, I'm like, perfect. Steven makes sense. But for you, every time I watch your content, I'm like, so I don't get it. Are you academia? Are you a rebel? Are you like a, a leftist who's gone more right? Are you a centrist? Like I'm looking at you and what I'm seeing is sort of a curious person, but also maybe slightly passive in a sense that mm -hmm. you like you'll make these statements. Like one time I remember I got really upset with you <laughs> because you said like um something about uh like something about dating and how you have like a hard time dating. And I was like, okay, if this bitch has a hard time dating, I'm fucked. Like what? And then I'm looking at you and I just think you're so lovely and so bright and so like interesting. How could you have a hard time dating? But then it made me wonder like, okay, what is this person's journey in relation to like being attractive or finding a mate? Because, and like sometimes you'll bring up details about yourself where I'm like, why does this even matter? And I'm like, oh, this must be the bubble. Like sometimes you'll mention your hair. And I, I'm like, in my world, like, Hair is like wearing a jacket. It's like, girl, you got 20. <laughs> so like in my head as a person, like, I'm just like, I don't know. Like, what is this? And then I'm like, okay, what bubble? So I don't even understand the bubble you're from. And I would I love to know either. more. You don't either? So tell me about it. Like, yeah, what is it? Like, what is, what is something my American brain can like? Because you're from South Africa, you said? Yes. But yes. you live in UK. Sometimes. Yes. Yes. Okay. So everyone thinks um, your accent's English, but it's not. No, it isn't. It okay. Isn't. Um, okay. I get a lot of, oh, I'm posh, I'm privileged, I'm all, you know, all these things. But um, yes, yes. So um, yeah, I think a lot of my not knowing what bubbles I fit into is because of sort of my upbringing and just my life. Mm. It's very much been a life that's been projected onto me, very much one of, um, well, when I was born, I was, I was born to... Long story short, I was born to a South African prostitute. Um, I have an older brother. She abandoned us on the street one day and just left us. We were picked up. Then we were separated. Oh. And I was fostered by a white family who then the mother of that family adopted me. But she had lots of mental illnesses. Everything um, tried to end her life many times. Mm. So she was in an institution. And so I was fostered by different white South Africans. And so I didn't grow up with my tribe, my uh, Zulu South African tribe. Um, lots of contention there also because uh, my biological mother was a, um, a uh, erect woman. Uh, that was a bad thing as well. So yeah, it was sort of moving around to lots of different white families mm. who were quite intent on um, perceiving me as white and then seeing that in sort of a good way, uh, like, you know, I'm not black. But then yeah. on the other hand, uh, black South Africans not having a good relationship, I would say, at all with black South Africa. And that always caused a lot of problems for me with identity with sort of of course accepting who i am how i look etc all that good stuff <clears throat> and um yeah yeah and also just living with different white south africans like very wealthy white south africans and mm. then very poor white south africans so it was like two extremes and so sort of this idea of a uh, white is privilege or white people have an advantage really doesn't fit into sort of my world view or sort yeah. of seeing sort of how some white people in this world live. Um, and yeah, then I uh, was in boarding school for a few years and that was the happiest I've been because it was a very religious boarding school, very, very religious, very strict. I also had very clear cut roles I suddenly had meaning and purpose, you know, mm -hmm. there was God in my life, yeah. even though I didn't believe in God, really. But there was just this, there was hierarchy, there was sort of purpose. 
I was very popular because mm -hmm. for the first time it was like a mixture of white and black South African kids without their parents. We were all just kept in this boarding school, not allowed to leave. And so we had to figure things out for ourselves without mm. sort of apartheid South Africa. And so because I looked black, but I spoke white and I spoke Afrikaans or Dutch sort of white language, I sort of communicated between the two sides. And mm -hmm. so I was very popular for once. And that was great. And then I was just pulled out of boarding school, had to move here to live with another guardian, um, a very racist, former white South African man who was like, he's about 70 when I moved here. And so that was a huge clash of identities. Um, and I did not, I hated <clears throat> living not just with him, but in the UK, because that was sort of my experience of England initially. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. So I think because of all of that, just a lot of, a lot of um, bubbles, I think. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and so I, I haven't really felt at home anywhere. anything, I guess. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I'm curious. Okay. Two quick questions. Well, one, one quick question. Um, did you graduate college then you have your bachelor's? Yes, yes. In yes. bachelor's in um well it's a BA, just in human social and political sciences. Perfect. Okay, so you have like at least that step into more than I do versus I just like dropped out of college right away. I was like, oh, I'm gonna go work. <laughs> I'm just like not very inclined yeah. to school. I, I dream about yeah. it sometimes. I'm like, should I go back to class? And I'm like, no, because if I get a degree <laughs> in anything, then everyone's gonna hold me to that degree versus like me just being a person, which is my brand. Cause I like that. I don't think yeah. you need school to read a book. Like I don't think well you need school. No, to, we don't no, need school to learn no. how to read, but you need to the, this right here. Like read a book. Okay. But yes. I'm curious um cuz I have this uh idea called like a gray child, which I should have given it a different name cuz people think it means like gray as asexuality or something, but no. I think there are children <laughs> who are born into bubbles like we all are and we all live in bubbles even me and they kind of don't fit in and the whole time they're there they're like but why are we doing this? No, no reason. Okay. And they go through the motions, but they don't really feel it or embody it. Like I was the most perfect Catholic kid, bro. I loved religion. Mm -hmm. I loved my bubble. Even though I was in conflict with it constantly around my sexuality, I was really yes. like, I was in conflict because I really believed in it. And I was like, oh my God, I'm going to hell. Oh my God, I'm a bad person. Like all of this stuff. But the great children yeah. in my life, they grew up in the same environment I did. But like in particular, the one I'm thinking of, they didn't really get it they didn't write really understand what we were doing and i kept trying to explain mm -hmm. to them like this is what we're doing we're going to church but they were like mm, yeah. i don't get it and now though they have like preferences or ideas or they're more left or maybe more this way they have those things they're still very much not a part of a real bubble mm -hmm. does that relate to you at all yes 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 i think so i think I think I've sort of left like a few footprints in certain bubbles. And so I, I still have sort of something, mm. something there. Um, but whether it's a sense of sort of being at home or finding, I guess, as you say, joy in those bubbles. Yeah. I don't. Um, and so that's, it's difficult because at the same time, I sort of, I want to sort of really immerse myself in sort of a bubble and sort of have that sort of autonomy and choice of being like, okay, this is, this is my bubble. These are my people. These yeah. are my rituals and symbols, whatever. <clears throat> but I have found that when I do try to do that, it's never good enough, especially for the people in those bubbles. So, you know, when I go into sort of my white people bubble my white south african people bubble it's not good enough because i look the way i look and mm -hmm. so it's just it's um you know there was a point when i was going to basically not uh be readopted but sort of legally like looked after by this one white woman and mm -hmm. we were all set but then she had a daughter uh a white daughter and her white daughter was not on board mm. and so she chose her daughter over me 
understandably mm. from her perspective sure. but in my mind at the time it was very traumatic because I absolutely loved her and adored her and it didn't make sense to me when she said you know I love you and you know even I would say I love you and I think that you're smarter than my own biological daughter and you are basically like my daughter like we did everything together and it was that sort of thing it was like okay I'm not good enough yeah. and then when it comes to uh say black people bubbles or like I guess left tube bubbles um especially recently I was in a bit of a controversy with some uh left tubers the, yeah, yeah I was I saw some of yes. the videos yeah <laughs> yeah yes and that really just hit home for me that you know as I am I'm I'm not accepted or not good enough to be in that bubble by those people according yeah. to their criteria their symbols their their rituals their their way of seeing reality and the world yeah and so that puts me off wanting to be a part of a bubble even yeah. though I really like want to I wish I could I really do but um you know I always say to myself or I've been saying to myself for a few years you know I wish I was a two like I really do like I wish I was like I, I would say I would say that mostly I am a two, but I, I don't think I'm sort of like a two in the way that fresh and fit are a yeah. two. Yeah. Like they sort of like, you know, they know what they think. They've got their idea of women and men. And there's absolutely they, no changing it. There's like absolutely exactly, exactly, no room exactly. for anything different. Yeah. Exactly. They have their <laughs> studio with the girls who look like Instagram models who come, they sit, reinforce everything, like their whole world. It's it's all mapped out. You it's know? beautiful. It's the way they do exactly. it. They reinforce the bubble consistently. Exactly. Well, great. So I think great children are kind of like threes. Mm -hmm. So threes are like glorified twos. But okay. at the same time, if you don't have a bubble, you really are kind of like this nomad more than a loner. Yeah. I like nomad more than yeah. loner because I find that yeah. they tend to bubble hop. The threes, mm -hmm. like the kid threes, the great children threes, where I feel like they're not yeah. aware of it, but they're questioning enough. And so it is interesting. So they try it. They like bubble hop. They like try to immerse. And then it's just like, ah, I just want to go home and be by myself. <laughs> or I want to be with anybody else but this. Because it's hard mm -hmm. to have. It almost feels like if the, you're not attuned to the bubble, it feels like gaslighting constantly. Like you're not good enough. You, you, you almost are. And even if you want to be like, um. I remember when I was in leftist circles, I was so excited because I was like, I found my people. And I was like stoked. Mm -hmm. And then I would hang out with them one-on-one -on -one, and they would do things in private that I was like, oh, like one time I wanted to be with like multiple women and all these women, I don't know what the fuck is wrong with alcoholism on the left, but it's insane. And like all of them were like, I can't be with you like sober. We have to be like drunk or high or something. And I was like, okay, either I'm ugly. And so you need to be intoxicated to have sex with me or do BDSM. Or you are so lost in the sauce that you can't even remember why you were preaching consent on your YouTube channels. Because this is about mm -hmm. consent. How can you ask me to flog you while you're drunk and then still talk about like, I can't do that. You know how much yeah. damage could be done with alcohol in your system alone. So again, mm -hmm. I think what happens is that people have values that they want to be a part of, but can't quite fit it into their real life, which I consider mm -hmm. those people um, the people who like see the values and try to live up to them versus turning it around and saying, we create values for ourselves to lift ourselves up, to remember why we want to be consistent when shit gets hard. Yeah. So I think my dilemma is that if you aren't born into a bubble that you really, really love, you might have a harder time later in life sort of establishing like your own values. Like think about how hard that is from scratch. At least I can look back and like cling to the bubbles values and be like, oh, I remember why I liked this bubble or this one or this one. So how mm -hmm. do you feel about the idea that now, if you haven't done it already, you will have to create your own bubble? Ooh. That's just for you and whoever you invite into it. It's exciting, but also very, very frightening. Yeah. Because there's a lot of risk. Mm -hmm. Um. And I definitely find myself very susceptible to things such as, uh, for instance, if I were to make my own bubble and it was to be sort of a very public affair, like on YouTube, say, like my YouTube versus, channel, Versus, and I just want to clarify because my audience is probably going to ask, versus making a bubble for ourselves. Like I have a bubble that I made for Brittany, where Brittany lives 24-7. And then mm -hmm. I have bubbles that I curated, like my internet bubble, to have a space yeah. I can be myself in public. So we're going to mm -hmm. talk about, you're mentioning the second one, right? The idea of making a bubble yes, that involves yes. other people. Okay, go ahead, please. Yes. 
I feel that at least now, at this point in my life, I'm still not at a point where I can sort of distinguish between the two, where I sort of have mm. my own bubble of just me and I know what that is, what I want that to be. And then my YouTube bubble, that mm -hmm. is myself, yeah, which dominates. It sort of has like absorbed uh, any possibility of this. And I think I am, I am going to have to get to a point where I sort of distinguish the two and find myself. And I yeah. think that that is something that I've sort of made, I guess, Oh, I'm not really like about resolutions, but I sort of have made that sort of a mission of this year to start really trying to do things and find myself, find my people beyond yeah. YouTube, go traveling, see what's out there, see other people that are out there. It not being about content, not being about subscribers, about AdSense, all of that being about me. Yeah. And other people involved in that and it's daunting but i am looking forward to it as well so yes yes i think in answer to your question that is exciting but i don't know if i am yet at the point where i'm willing to give up on what on at least the ideal that i see of being say a two mm -hmm. because it looks great it really does yeah and I think for a lot of people it gives them so much meaning and especially on YouTube it gives you followers it gives you money it gives you like all these things that I think wow you know I want that you know I would I would like like lots of followers say or I'd like yeah. you know to not worry about rent and it would be great but that's just an ideal it's still an ideal which I still sort of am uh, persuaded by somewhat. But I think in time, I will move on from that and be like, you know what? There's yeah. more important things like sort of curating my own bubble mm -hmm. for me and yeah. that sort of thing. This yeah. is kind of exciting for me because uh, it's nice to hear somebody be like aware of the fact that they're still trying. And I don't even blame you because literally, hold on. The number one comment I get from my fours is like a four will come to me and they'll be like, so which bubble do I end up in? I was like, which one do you feel gravitating like you're gravitating towards? They're like, none of them. I was like, yeah, that kind of checks out. <laughs> so like that's, that's <laughs> kind of the point, right, is that none of them are ever as fulfilling because they're not going to give you everything you need. They're not going to mm -hmm. see you the same way. Like I am. Um, I really, 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 really struggle in my own even like personal relationships where People in my life, like my brother or my mom or my dad will say things like, well, you've become much more like conservative as you aged. And I was like, oh, yeah, I think everyone thinks that even my like leftist friends are like, you're so conservative now. And in my head, I'm just rebellious in like a different way or more progressive in a different yeah. way. Like I'm not very good mm -hmm. with systems. I tried to battle those in the past. I just I'm not educated enough to really understand like systems, but I can understand mm -hmm. like individual relationships. And I find that none of the bubbles ever give me the satisfaction in how they observe me nor other people in a way that feels authentically open and honest. It always mm -hmm. feels corrupted by some bias. And so I can't handle yeah. it very well. And I know we all have bias and I know stereotypes are real. But at the same time, mm -hmm. I really need to try to see somebody for like what they're doing and why they're doing it. Like <clears throat> I cover Sneeko mm -hmm. a lot or like Logan Paul and everyone's oh, like, yes. they're bad people. And I was like, okay. So for Brittany, when I think bad, I'm thinking like fucking kids, fucking your mom, like things that are rape, like things that are like murder, like things that are like, like made off stealing billions of millions of dollars from people in their retirements. I'm thinking like people who destroy your life. Yeah. I'm not yes. really thinking anymore about people who like, I don't know, like stupidly, th I don't know, wear a Confederate flag they don't even understand. I went into my cousin's house. We're Middle Eastern. We're Iraqi. And then mm -hmm. his mom is white. And I walked into his house and he had a big Confederate flag in his room. And I was like, what is that? What does that mean? And like, he was just like, he's like, because it's for my white side. I was like, yeah, I mean, it makes sense. Your white side technically likes the confederate flag but like like just like the irony of it was so beautiful to me i was like 
I fuck with this. And like even when people tell me like um, they're always arguing on the Internet, like whether or not I'm white or not, because I am white, but I'm not white, but I am white, but I'm not white. And so it's like very confusing. Mm. And I have a sibling who literally drives himself crazy wishing he was white every day. So you you have to understand, like I grew up with a brother who has like a little like issue around him not being white. He's like, that's all I want, Brittany. White people give everything to everybody. If I could just be white. And I'm like, are we not the same color? And then I'm like realizing like it's not the color. It's yeah. the association. Yeah. Oh, yes. Definitely. And that's what people yes. are judging you on. They don't care if you're the same color as them. They want to know your bloodline is theirs. They want to know you understand what the Confederate flag means versus my parents. I'm going to be real. I don't think I ever knew what a Confederate flag really was until the like SJWs went ham on them. Mm -hmm. Because in my bubble, like my parents would never need to know what that is. I didn't learn it in school because mm -hmm. I was homeschooled till I went to public school. So like none, like there just, just there would be no reason for me to know what a Confederate flag is. Yeah. But I can understand how people want to make these assumptions that like, it's just, it's too much, girl. It's just too much blindness for me to think that these are the answers. So what I'm doing is like, I don't really curate the bubble I live in personally. That's my own personal domain. Nobody's in it but my partner because he's the only person I've ever met my whole life that genuinely mm -hmm. would fit into it. Everyone else, like there's always a disconnect. There's always looking at people like, can I trust you? Yes. Because you're not seeing me and I'm not seeing you and I don't know what that means. Mm -hmm. And so I think I end up becoming very nomadic. All my besties are nomadic. You seem nomadic. Like everyone I know who goes on an introspection journey, I feel turns into no a nomad because they realize mm -hmm. like, how can I say where home is when home is something I've either curated within myself, which means I can travel with it. Or mm -hmm. now I've put down roots in a bubble, curating a, 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 an existence in a bubble where now I'm a part of that community, question mark, but I'm not. Like I live in a conservative bubble right now. It's kind of, it's like gay flags are everywhere, but let's go Brandon flags are everywhere too. So it's very like anti-Biden, yeah. but but okay with gays, but not trans. Yeah. And it's very yeah. chill, low tax. Everyone's like minds their own business. But I also know none of my neighbors know me and all of them are assuming who I am 100% of the time. Yeah. Just like everyone else is. And that has always mm -hmm. been the issue. So when you're dealing with the issue of you, like people assuming who you are, and then you wondering like, well, am I that person? Do I belong in this bubble? It's very yes. confusing. And then it feels like a betrayal when you leave. Like I had one of my leftist friends like ghost me after years of friendship. And I was like shook because I was like, you're a leftist, you know, like first I have borderline, which is an abandonment mental health problem. So like I would have really appreciated like a heads up instead of a ghosting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like that would have yes. been great. But I also understand like she's just like mentally ill because like no sane person just ghosts a friend of six years or whatever because they're having a bad time. Mm -hmm. So they must be really having a bad time. But I also know one of the justifications in her head because she had brought it up to me a couple of years before she did this was um. I'm afraid you're becoming like a white supremacist. Right. And I was like, uh-huh. Yep. That sounds kind of crazy. So what are we dealing here with here? And again, I think what happens is like people curate these bubbles around someone else's values and then decide to morph themselves around those values instead, again, forming our values out of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so like if your values aren't going to match up with a bubble, how are you going to end up in a bubble, girl? Exactly. So I want people to really think about yeah. why do you hold this value? Is it serving your joy? Because I don't think I hold a value of accusing like Middle Eastern people of being white supremacists. Exactly. I don't think exactly. that's a part of my exactly. like my makeup. I don't yeah. think I could do that. But I understand why yeah. they think it's possible. Because like one in a billion Middle Eastern people might be like, Trump, like, yay. But like, again, being pro-Trump doesn't mean white supremacist. But I understand. Exactly. But they're just stuck on that script. So when you look at the world, you live in scripts, you see the scripts. I want to talk to you if it's OK, if you don't have any comments or questions. No. no. I want to Perfect. I want to use this to segue into incel conversations. Oh, OK. Because I see it literally the same way. We're like okay. incels are having this very specific experience. And then mm -hmm. they're assuming like the world now operates this way, or at least they'll say like in the West. Yes. But like yes. immigration to Europe's pretty easy, bitches. Does wait, is Europe the West <laughs> to them? Does that count? Yeah, yeah. I think what so. Are they, Western so Europe. wait, well, what do they want then? Who do they want? What culture do they want if the West is bad? The Middle East? I think they want what the West nostalgically was. I think they sort of have hope that there's sort of like a semblance of what the West was, that we can get to that point. 
uh, if we just get rid of feminism. Uh, yeah, but okay, yeah. so okay, that's I think that's just an ideal though. That isn't a reality <laughs> at all. It is completely fabricated, nostalgic idea of what it was to be a man and a woman. But, Nostalgia yeah. is so blinding, though. It's like as a kid, you're like, man, I remember the 90s being great. But all, the 90s also had like a lot of really shit things, right? Oh, exactly. Oh, yes, yes. Anti-nostalgia is far more. That's that's what we should be going for, I think, as sort of like cultural references uh, more than anything. <laughs> Why do you think you have embraced the incel bubble? Why are you kind to them? <laughs> I think I see, I wouldn't say a lot of myself, but I see something quite important in myself in a lot of them, which is, I think, feeling, feeling ostracized by, I think, the ideal of what you want to be, of sort of, I guess, sort of being the ideal man who gets lots of girls and therefore feels like your masculinity has been reinforced and that you've found your meaning you've sort of found your like Nietzschean ubermensch your superman and I think sometimes you can feel you feel like you've sort of tried a lot of different things in order to get to that point but everybody just rejects you and that's just your life your life story of being rejected by people in my case sort of feeling rejected by white people, rejected by black people. And then when I started exploring my sexuality, rejected by women, rejected by men, uh, always being dumped. Mm. I think I really, really empathized with that sense of rejection and the rage that that just instills in you, especially when people are not willing to firstly recognize that rage but also they just sort of brush off your rejection as just being oh like it's it's whatever like who cares um because they're not being rejected or at least you see them as not being rejected that mm -hmm. they don't have their problems that it's a lot easier for them and i think I've definitely, like, at least in my life, not so much now, but in, I would say, for the majority of my life, I sort of saw it as everybody else has it easier than me. Everybody else, else's life is better. They have families who love them. They yeah. have, you know, they know their brother. Mm -hmm. um, they sort of know where they fit in the world. Mm -hmm. um, they have funding to do a master's and a PhD. Um, they have privilege, and I don't. And... I was fuming and really, really angry. And that rage just, for me at least, because I never had really an outlet for my anger in the way that I think incels now, at least some of them have the forums where yeah. they can let it out. And so I am, I'm not for deplatforming. I think it's important to be able to just let it out, especially yeah. when you feel that there's nowhere where you can. Yes. And I didn't have that. And because I was always very much a good Christian girl who never expressed her feelings, never had an identity, always tried to make everybody else feel good um, about me being sort of the, the elephant in the room um, and fearing that I would just be passed on if I was too much of an issue for one family. I didn't have that outlet. And so it just turned into this internal self-hate um, I just became very um, a suicidal. Sorry, I don't want to get you demonetized. No, I, I talk about killing um, myself all the time. It's fine. Yes, yeah, exactly. And at uni, it was just really bad. It was terrible. And um, yeah, yeah, I just went on antipsychotic medication, mm. antidepressants. And so it was just, I felt very, I sort of didn't have control over my world. And I really relate to incels in that yeah. sense of not having control over a world which is telling you that you do have control and that you know if you are getting rejected it's your fault or if you are unattractive that's your fault or your problem mm. or you know it is what it is and I think that rage that anger I can really resonate with and I can I get it yeah and so it isn't something that when an incel calls me like a shiboon that I sort of think, 
oh my gosh, this racist individual is da 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 da. It's sort of, I get it. You're mm. angry. You're very angry. And I've been there. And, you know, at times I still am there. I still do get angry. Yeah. But, um, yeah, yeah. So it's funny. I'll like, uh, I'll call my partner, or I'll call a friend. I'm like, hey, I just need to be a fucking venting too right now that complains about things that absolutely do not matter. But they really upset me emotionally. And I'm feeling like I don't want to like yell at the internet. And sometimes I will go off on the internet and I feel sort of bad after. Like I went after Pearl and I was so mean to that bitch. I should have been nicer to her. But at the same time, she called women whales. And I was like, girl, if you're going to go for someone's looks, I'm going to go for your looks right now, bitch. Because like. Oh, yes, I saw that. I saw that. I'm sorry. And I felt really bad. But also like sign up for my OnlyFans because that fucking worked. And people did sign up. Thank you. But like, you know, it's like one of those things where I would never go after a woman's looks like that. But I love to bully a bully. There's something inside me that's so petty that I'm like, oh, oh, opportunity, opportunity. And I just get so excited. And plus, like, she you was- did it well, though. Did, did I? Did was I thought well, kind of mean. Yeah. Was I too mean? You were mean, but to be fair, that's Pearl's brand. It is her brand. Her, her language. You were speaking her language. Bro. And so I feel like- I don't feel that it's as bad. It would be very different if you were saying that to somebody who was not Pearl. Say. Right, right. I think you were speaking in her language. That's her, how I thought. You were sort of like going onto her turf and being like, right. That's how I thought it. Fight. Because she said so, yeah. literally, she was like, women are, are babies. They can't handle criticism. They can't even, they're whales. They're just all ugly whales. And I was like, oh, yeah. Let's go, girl. Let's yeah. go. Let's fight it out, girl. Yes. But then I did. And she called me a weirdo, which is a fact. So true but then her audience did the most beautiful human thing in the whole world and they just went after how ugly i was so like how could this ugly woman go after pearl i was like how could ugly pearl go after other women we're all ugly yeah. like if you're average yeah, you're ugly exactly. unless you're yeah. a 10 you're hot what are you all going to insult each other of your abs aren't as six they're i'm an eight you're a six pack like what, what are you going to insult each other over exactly. but like when you're average when you've got things that people don't like and they call you for it when the amount of people who think i look like a man that this is my place i have the right as an ugly person to criticize another ugly person and by ugly i mean yeah. average so again, mm -hmm. if we're going to say, like, I think all humans are animals and we all look as good as we're going to look for lions and bears and tigers. Like, I just don't think we're that yeah. different. But if we're yeah. going to be hypercritical about symmetry and how we look, mm. none of us are going to pass that vibe check. Like, none yeah. of us, except the extremely attractive people, which is why they are rare. <laughs> and exactly. the rest of us are just doing the best with what we have, which, like, you know, do your hair nice and you'll look okay. That's always my theory. Exactly. But yeah. it was, it was, yeah. that was like my favorite bubble to hop into because I was like, oh my God. And they can't even, like, I hope she talks to me. I think she maybe won't, but I think she probably oh. couldn't because again, like I have no problem with who she is. A per I don't think she's a bad person. Mm -hmm. I think she's yeah. playing, doing the best she can within her bubble. So like if you go to Logan Paul or Sneeko or Pearl and you told them, like if Sneeko came to me and said, Brittany, and he didn't, we hadn't talked since December, I think when, if he reached out to me and said, Brittany, uh, what do you think I should really do? I'd be like, give up all this money, give up Andrew Tate. None of this matters. Like, go meditate in the woods for six months. Sneeko wouldn't be a millionaire now if he took my advice. My advice is exactly. better. My advice is better for introspection and inner peace. That has nothing mm. to do with dominating his bubble. Exactly. exactly. And so, of course, he's smart enough to, like, ignore me and hop back into a bubble and choose this one and then die hard in it because when he gets out of it, maybe he'll be like 30. He'll be not only rich, but he'll be able to zen out in the mountains on his own budget. Exactly. Oh, yeah. So exactly. it's so much more reasonable yeah. than anything I could have done in my youth. But that's what I mean. Even with Pearl, I hope she one day realizes, like, you can call people ugly all you want, but you got to you gotta make sure you start with yourself, girl. I'm sorry. Exactly. Like, you can't go around exactly. talking about people's looks, okay? Like, you just got to be aware of it. It's not very nice in general. And we all are born into bodies we don't always love. And so mm -hmm. we can't choose right. it. And so, like, I, as somebody who's never had plastic surgery but definitely came from a culture where when you turn 18, you got a nose job. Mm -hmm. That was everyone's gift. All my cousins, all mm -hmm. my aunties and uncles. That's, like, a tradition. It's like, hey, do you want to get your bump fixed? Do you want to give yourself uh, that weird, like, thing thing? But, I, you know, it's yeah. not – um, I already know with my look, it's better to embrace it than to try to change it. Yeah. Plus, I really am scared of plastic surgery. It oh, makes yes. me angry. What if you come out uglier? Exactly. Yes. Oh, gosh. You have a little Kim moment. Yes. Oh, that dear. would be my luck. Yes. Yeah. That would be my luck. Mm -hmm. I would just come out less pretty. Plus, now I can say, like, look, when I hear people say, like, oh, you look like a man or, like, you are not pretty for a woman, 
all I'm hearing is that like, yeah, dude, like I, I am like a genetic 100% Middle Eastern woman. And if you don't vibe with Middle Eastern women, I'm totally okay with that. Yeah. Because like, I don't know what to do about it. This is just how I look. <laughs> like, exactly. you know what I mean? What am I supposed to do? But exactly. I can understand when you're in those bubbles, why you'd play to it. I don't know if you know this about me, but um, I don't know when. There was one point in my career where I had to make a decision. Do I want to talk about philosophy or do I want to be like a full on OnlyFans girl? Like full on cosplay, full on get your boobs yes. done, maybe even shave down my nose. Like I was thinking money because the only reason you become like a cosplay OnlyFans girl is money. That is a business yeah. for money mm -hmm. versus I think my work allows me to be poor. I have an excuse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I'm allowed to be poor in this career, but in OnlyFans, like, you better do yeah. that to win, girl. You better put your yeah. body out there to win. So one of the reasons I'm more sex positive than focus on my OnlyFans is just because, like, I'm not using it just to make, like, it's not a, it's a side gig. It's not the gig. Yes. If it was the yeah. gig, I had best be making six figures a year. Because, like, yeah. what else would you, would there be no excuse? Not with all these men on the internet claiming that they're willing to give me tons of money. Mm -hmm. Like it'd be, I'd be a fool not to take it, but now I can't take it because I chose philosophy. So if oh. I take their money as a sex worker, like it's a kind I'm not, then I'm mm -hmm. putting myself in a bubble that I don't really belong to and thus selling them a product that isn't ever going to be as good as they want from a person who really is dedicated to sex work. Yeah. So I pride yeah. myself in being good at either sex work or my job. But I've put 100 mm -hmm. percent of myself into YouTube to try to make it the best because this yeah. is the bubble I like. Yeah. Why did yes. you choose the YouTube bubble? Oh, gosh. I could do the typical answer of the YouTube bubble chose me. Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> hmm. Huh. Why did I choose the YouTube bubble? I think it was a very good mix of things that I like. It was a mix of, especially this idea or very idealistic image of academia, which I had when I went in as sort of a dewy eye, a little undergraduate. I really thought that going to university would solve all my problems. Like finally I found like a place that accepted me. I got accepted into Cambridge. Mm. Like this was now my bubble and it was going to be all about just learning and just the experience. It was an end in itself rather than, which university is now, it's a business. It's a means yeah. to an end of getting a good job. Yeah. And I lived in this fantasy that I was there to be an intellectual. And then when the end came and I suddenly didn't have anything, I hadn't gone to any of the job fairs or anything, I suddenly realized, oh, I actually have nothing like I've got mm. this degree I've got all this knowledge I've got all these books but I don't actually have anything in this world that we live in today yeah and I think YouTube for me was a way for me to actually weirdly enough use my degree all my books everything I'd learned this idea of sort of writing essays and then um learning new skills which is something that I do like to do like learning how to edit and things like that that really gave me a little bit of hope in at least sort of public intellectualism I guess mm -hmm. sort of like being the sort of public intellectual like you know in Fr France in the 60s that sort of thing and I think that that ideal I've been able to fit into a bit more on YouTube because it at least creates a convincing enough illusion that you are sort of doing something with your video essays, that you're putting these ideas out into the world, that they're changing people's lives, that you're doing yeah. at least something political, something meaningful. That illusion is very convincing, I think, for a lot of people. I've sort of gotten over that now, and I sort of mm. see this as a job, and I see it as a very a fascinating job because I can do what I want. I can make videos about what I want. But in terms of seeing my videos as sort of this transformative like sort of thing that's contributing something to the masses I've sort of left that in the dust a bit mm. um I don't think the YouTube space that I'm in has sort of uh reckoned with that I think there's still 
I'd say a lot of sort of sanctimony, a lot of sort of we're doing sort of the Lord's work for yeah. modern people. Um, but yes, yeah, I think it's a very interesting space. And I think because of that, I don't want to leave, like at least not for the foreseeable future. Yeah, because me too, same. it's just fascinating. There's so many interesting people. I mean, I cannot imagine. I just I, I reflect on sort of the people I've spoken to, the videos I've made, like all of this, like even speaking to you. I mean, this would have mm -hmm. never, ever, even like I yeah. would have never even contemplated it when I was watching your video about like why Moses is posing as <laughs> as, a, as a as a five. Bro. So uh, or four. You know? <laughs> We're all water, bro. We're all water. I know. I know. And it's it's just anything can happen. <clears throat> like really anything yeah. can happen in this bubble. And yeah. it's so it's just no day is ever the same. No video is ever the same. Um and But it's it just, is it's, I, I'm gonna challenge I want you to go deep a little deeper though, because it is the okay. same area of YouTube. Like why didn't you become like a hey guys, what's up? It's Z. Welcome back to my channel. Like what <laughs> Why did you become one of those YouTubers? <laughs> Whoa. Well, ah. Uh, oh, that's really interesting. Because, you know, when I think about what YouTube I watch, like, <clears throat> predominantly, um, I venture into all different communities. Like, I would say that the community I'm most, the bubble I'm most in is Hater Nation, the Amberlynn Reed, Foodie Beauty. That really? sort of bubble. Okay, like, let's go. Very petty stuff, you know, all yeah. of that. Yeah. Like, that is... I love that bubble. That bubble is just, it feeds something in me. Like all these like middle-aged, like <laughs> Gen X woman, like yeah. just like streaming about, I don't know what. It's fascinating. It intrigues me. And, you know, I have thought about sort of entering that domain and space, mm -hmm. but I think I have, I think even though I like to pose as a bit of a nihilist, mm. I'm not actually yeah. that nihilistic. I still do, I think in my like life, very much sort of refer to, back to sort of like the golden rule, like do unto others as you'd have them do unto you and mm -hmm. sort of those things. I'm quite traditional in that sense, even though I like to pretend that I'm not. Yeah. I think I am at the heart of it. I think mm -hmm. I've really been socialized, at least by, for a part of my childhood, I um, was fostered by a woman i consider her my grandmother but she was sort of a white healer religious mm. healer so we go around to black communities healing people and i was her little protege so i think i've still got a that's still in me um and yeah yeah so i i don't think i could justify it to myself i think this bubble that i'm in i can sort of conveniently marry sort of it being a job and making mm. money and sort mm -hmm. of seeing it in that very objective sense of sort of, um, I guess, sort of a, not really like a, a real hustle, but sort of, yeah. you know, semi hustle and also maintaining sort of my, my moral tenets and foundation um, in a way that I sort of can go to bed and sleep peacefully, at least yes. for me. Yes. Um, whereas I feel that if I was a part of, you know, the community which I sit and watch for hours, um, I wouldn't be able to do that. And I also wouldn't feel like I'd be feeding myself like mm -hmm. a challenge and challenging mm -hmm. myself and who I want to sort of at least craft myself into um, through the days of my life. So, yeah. 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 No, same. There was um, that's why, like, I had to choose like philosophy over like sex work full time, because as much as I like mm -hmm. it, and I'm pro sex work. I just mm. don't think I could be cute every day. And I think I'd be bad at it. And I think that it would drain on me and being intimate with myself, like being intimate with others on the Internet. Like, I think I'd be really good at like sexting or if people want to do like phone calls. I think I'd be so good at that. Mm. But because oh, yeah. I've decided to do yeah. multi branding stuff. I think people would be calling me now to like record me and then like post it on Twitter. Like, oh, I got Bernie Simon to like do phone sex with me. <laughs> and it just like wouldn't be fun versus like in my fantasy of being a sex worker, I wouldn't have been Bernie Simon, the YouTuber. I would have been, oh, this girl who does sex work really helped me like 
become mm-hmm. more intimate with my body and now I can go and actually have a real relationship where I actually are am not afraid to talk about my differences and like how my body works or like how my orgasm works like I have this fantasy sex worker in my head that I just never mm-hmm. could make real so I chose a thing I could actually like make real yeah and that's the yeah. Britney that I am right now and I've been a lot of Britney's in my life but my joy has to be number one so I always threaten YouTube I was like I will delete my channel right now if you all piss me off enough, like I'm like I am because the ultimate goal I have like right now I'm on my wisdom arc, which means for the next 90 years, I will be trying to like gain the f- wisdom I think I'm trying to gain, which I'm sure life will tell me is not what I've been really searching for and will actually show me something better because that's usually how it goes. <laughs> but I know I'm on this like because I don't think I'm a wise person. I think I'm a person who has wise moments. But I'm mm-hmm. looking forward Good to being. A- yeah, I think it's really important. I think a lot of people would be like, Brittany, I think you are a wise person. I was like, no. I have moments of wisdom, which is so different, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because like I'm a person like anyone else. So I am like looking for that joy. So eventually I want to build my life up to where I can move off YouTube if I want to, Mm -hmm. but not because I have to, but because I've curated a life that's so beautifully peaceful that I'm like, guys, I'm going to zen out on my garden for six months. I'll call, I'll be back in six months. Like I would love to be so financially stable that I could genuinely go do this thing and come back with like a really great long form, like almost documentary of what I've been doing. But I can't Mm -hmm. financially do that. So I have to work every day to hopefully get to that point. Because even though I make a lot of money now, it costs a lot of money to live. (laughs) Exactly. So I don't really have money left over, you know. So it's one of those Mm -hmm. things where that's a goal. Um, But it means that I'm I'm sort of facilitating a path that will allow me to leave the internet one day. Probably around Mm -hmm. 60, 70. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But I I can't imagine my life's going to go in a direction where I'm not going to want to be alienated for some time. Like isolated, not alienated, isolated, like by myself. Mm -hmm. But like right now I can't do that. So I wonder for your future, do you ever see a moment where you aren't obligated to post? Oh. I think something would have to happen. Uh, I feel, <laughs> yes, I don't know what, but I feel that something sort of rather dramatic would have to happen in my life. I think something uh, like a partner coming mm. into my life. I think sort of having that meaning because I'm very... I do find myself whenever I've been in relationships, I suddenly have this confidence that I just don't have, um, mm. this the sense of sort of purpose that I don't have. Even after after the honeymoon period, after all of that, when it's just us sort of doing the day-to-day things, when it's us just fighting, mm-hmm. it's just this confidence and this person, sort of this human in me that just comes out that is just never there when there isn't that partner and I think when I'm in that zone that zone of confidence of assurance of feeling like my humanity has been validated by this one person so Mm. I sort of can feel at one with my body with who I am with my thoughts my feelings I think then I would have the confidence to say right no I'm not going to post unless I want to post and definitely not there now. And I don't really know how to find that on my own two feet. I've always only found it in relation to a partner. Yeah. And so um, I definitely notice that, that difference. Is it because what is the partner giving you in that moment? Is it the monetary value? Like they can end up covering the bill. So you're allowed to like post only when you want. Is that a part of it? Uh, it hasn't been with my past relationships. It's okay. been that <clears throat> very, that thing that I've never had where somebody has just, at least I guess, I suppose they love me, sort of loved me as a human being for me and I'm sort of their person. And so I suddenly have significance. I'm not just a human being in the world yeah. and insignificant. I'm significant to somebody for God knows what reason. Mm-hmm. And that gives me sort of this hope and this I guess this confidence in a way like even when I was in my last relationship I was working in a grocery store Mm -hmm. like when I was there 
like single working there bloody like just ugh, awful but when I was in a relationship it was suddenly like yeah the job was awful but there was a reason why I was there there was a purpose why I was there you know mm. I had sort of like things to do you know a reason to make money etc um but also I sort of had the confidence to really stand up for myself there and to sort of make my situation a lot better because, you know, somebody had validated my humanity and my personal yeah. life and sort of said, you know, you're significant. You deserve to be treated well. So I'd go to work and I'd project that and be like, you know, I deserve to be treated well. You know, don't mistreat me um, because, you know, somebody said that, you know, I shouldn't be mistreated. And, you know, they validated that in myself. Yeah. So it really helps me in sort of setting up boundaries with other people um, with really feeling that, OK, I can have a say in how I'm treated in the world outside and things like that. So I think I'd have more, I'd have more confidence in setting up a boundary. Yeah. And also in not being afraid of sort of the monetary loss as much as yeah. I am now, because yeah. I'd have that other person and I'd also have that reassurance, even though I don't have a lot of money, I've got you. And, you know, I sort of know that you're going to look after me. You're going to validate me, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think that's that's the thing for me. Have you um, and I'm sure you have. I've talked I talk a lot about like people seeing us, how I think people are like they want to love and be loved, but also we want to see and be seen. And so it's like yes. that hope that, oh, gosh, I hope when they talk to me, like we actually do humanize each other. But I am pretty convinced anecdotally because of my life experience and what I've seen depending on the bubble. So it could change caveat 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 I feel like for my life uh everyone always sees me partly which is great and I'm really grateful for it and I don't need much from people I actually at this stage in my life need very little I need just like one thing for us to have in common like one thing where we're like ah that's my friend I talked to like about x with like it doesn't matter what it is how important or how vital it could just be board games I don't care like that's enough for me to build a whole ass friendship on it like I don't care yeah but my partner, the person I'm going to tie myself to because I believe like for me in my life, I want like a secure, consistent partner till the day I die. Um, mm. I want like that particular thing. I um, I have to I had to set the standard of being seen by that person, like basically completely. <laughs> uh, I, you know, 80 percent or more. That was kind of my my hope. Right. And again. Yeah. Not 100 percent, but like 80 percent or more. And then I think we're up to like we're pretty we're pretty up there now. We've like spent a lot of time clarifying how I talk or he talks or making sure we see each other. But I've mm -hmm. noticed that I'm in love with like literally the consciousness that is this human. Mm -hmm. So if somebody asks me, like, what is it about him? And I'm like, um, yeah, without revealing like his literal person and explaining to the world, like and dissecting him for the whole Internet. I don't think I could explain it because he's like. He's a person. Exactly. He has a job or he has an apartment. He has a life. He has friends and family. Great. That's like everybody. <laughs> yes. Yes. But the thing I love about him is just like him. Yes. Yes. And I don't even know how to explain it to people that I'm like, exactly. oh, my gosh. Like, whoa. And like, same. He's just like, oh, he um, he I really think he understands me in like a way like no one ever has, period. But it, mm -hmm. it also is because of who he is. Yes. So I can't like, again, it's not about a competition of I'm rejecting everyone else because no one is ever as good as him. It's not about that. Exactly. It's just the consciousness that you are like, why didn't I end up marrying any of my girlfriends? Why didn't I end up marrying any of my other boyfriends? Why didn't I marry anyone else? Why? Even though mm -hmm. one of them asked. It's not like people haven't asked me. I was just like, no, yeah. I don't think we're bringing each other the most joy. Like, don't you see there's problems in this relationship because we see reality differently? Mm -hmm. What happens when we have kids? We're going to completely deviate and then we're going to argue about how we're raising those children. And then I finally found someone that like, even though his life was in Europe and like went a completely different way, we ended up throughout our whole journeys ending up seeing reality like so similarly. Mm -hmm. And he's not a parrot mimic of me. Don't say that because like I don't want to speak for him. But we got to the same conclusion so similarly that I don't need to um, like, you know, how the Internet always like mistakes everything I say. <laughs> 
Oh yes. Oh, always. it is so Everything exhausting. Face, out of context. Oh my gosh. Completely yeah. out of context. Yeah. He just never does that, and he gets it. And so I'm just like, oh, I'm so relieved because even my own parents, even my own siblings, sometimes we have miscommunication problems. I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna go to my own island and go back to my bubble because y'all mm-hmm. are exhausting me, and I don't need you to all see me this way. But you know what's funny is like people want to. People mm-hmm. will tell me like, Brittany, just give me the tools. I want to see you. But the problem is, is that I think we force ourselves to be a version of ourselves we're not in order to be close to people we were never meant to be close to. And I think that that's the problem people run into because we've been told, at least I've been told growing up, we should all want to be friends. And if we're friends, we're like this. And though I have inner circle and I love my friends so much, I also kind of want to be a nomad. Like right now I'm like, I kind of want to go on a journey where I just go from library to library. And then I'm like, that's a very solitary. And I asked my partner, I was like, and he's and I was like, are you going to cock block me from this adventure? And he goes, do you think I will? And I was like, no. Maybe. No, I don't think so. But I have to think about him now because mm-hmm. he is with me and I've asked him to yeah. be with me. So I can't just go on this like this adventure where I just hop from library to library and spend like my whole life there. I have to think yes. about him. But you see how I'm not thinking about my friends on whether or not I go to a library? Yes. My friends yeah. don't matter in that regard. I love them, but no. So with your friends, because I didn't haven't heard you mention them yet. I've heard you mention a partner mm-hmm. giving you this confidence. Where do your friends mm-hmm. play into your life? Do you have like friends or are you nomadically looking for like, mm. you know what I mean? Yes. Oh, friends. Oh, this <laughs> is difficult. <laughs> um, My friends play very different roles and I have – a myriad of friends I have yeah I have a very complicated relationship with my friends you know I have friends who are uh living sort of in academia and doing their own thing and so we only communicate like very infrequently mm-hmm. I have friends that ghost me I have friends that I ghost mm. um I have friends yeah yes oh yes I have a friend who relies on me financially and so mm. that's a very strained friendship but I'm still just always there. Um, you know, I have a friend that I pay rent for and mm. I have friends who I just, I talk to about all my problems, don't care about their problems. I have vice versa. You mm-hmm, know, mm-hmm. it's all these different friends for all these different reasons. And... Uh, There's one friend that I do have, and it's a very intense friendship, but it's one that is also very, very confusing for me. Mm. And so I don't really know what to make of it because, I mean, long story short, he's, um, he was my former, f- former professor ah. and we ended up going up, going out to dinner just mm-hmm. platonically, nothing mm-hmm. happened. But in terms of like appropriateness, it's not considered appropriate, I guess. I don't know. Even um, though you're like out of s- or college level and stuff, exactly, it's like super exactly. weird. Yes, yes. Hmm. this is this is this is sort of the narrative of say, I guess my more left leaning friends. Shall okay, we say. okay. But... They're just pussies because they don't know how to tell people no. But go ahead. <laughs> true, true, and so it's a very very intense friendship, but it's one that's very much sort of. When we meet, it's like kismet. It's like, okay, mm. this is incredible. This mm. is amazing. Like we can talk about anything. We didn't speak or see each other for three years. And then yeah. suddenly we saw each other and we had dinner and it was the most incredible just experience. And now I haven't seen him for months. And like in a few months, I'm going to go to Portugal to stay with him Fun. in his house. Fun. And I'm like, I know. And it's like, this is sort of so out of range for me in terms of friendships because it's it would usually petrify me that idea of even staying with a friend but this is like nah it's fine you know I don't know you I don't know how you live but there's something about how we come together and that's it'll work I know it'll work in its weird way and that also terrifies me because it is a friendship that I've never experienced Mm. I've always had friendships where it is very much a sort of a give or a take somebody is giving a lot and the other person's taking more 
and it isn't sort of a they're always friendships based on sort of a bit of conditions or con there's conditions sort of like a terms and conditions sort of yeah. arrangement mm -hmm. and this isn't it it's very very human um and very vulnerable very much sort of very exposed like sort of all my flaws everything and that's very frightening but it's also something that i really do want yeah so i don't know how to navigate that as somebody who is quite i guess nomadic um that also that scares me because it's sort of at one point it feels like i'm relinquishing some of my freedom and sort of the the freedom that i get from just doing my own thing being my yeah. own person not thinking about somebody else but then at the same time I do appreciate the value, the significant value, very unique value that I get from that kind of intimacy that is very, very rare, at least in terms of my experiences. I don't think you really find that where you really just connect with somebody. It's just, it's meant to be, it's really yeah. meant to be. And it's just so rare. You can't really explain why um, or how, but it just is. Yeah. Um, and it's really incredible when it happens. So, yeah. Yes. I, yes. I have this like theory that um, it's not like it's actually a stole from Sex in the City, but in <laughs> Sex in the City, they talk about how they're each other's soulmates. And I've been from friend group to friend group my whole life. Like I have always been either like mm. embraced and then kicked out or like bullied out or they're like, oh, just goes Britney. And I'm like, OK. And like it took me a really long time and a lot of therapy to understand like what was happening because I grew up again in like a world where I had this fantasy that all my friends would get along. We'd all like be together for a long time. But it ended up being much more like in my 20s, everyone was trying to find their main friend groups and I just didn't find mine. And I found out that mine was really a bunch of nomads. So we don't live near each other. We only see each other when we can fly out to one another. But we always and we all we all met for different reasons, like completely different reasons. But we all ended up being people who even in our own bubbles, they're all mm -hmm. the singular person in their bubbles. So none mm -hmm. of my best friends know each other. They don't hang out because yeah. like that is me. I'm the friend. Yes. Right. And I go yeah. to my friends and then my friends mm -hmm. come to me individually, but they don't ever all hang out. It's not like a like the like the show yes, Friends. Same. It is yeah. not like that. Yeah. OK. Yeah, and then exactly. even them in their world, they have like normie friends that they know from their jobs. And then they have me mm -hmm. that they just became friends with because they just were in the right place at the right time. And we've connected and decided to stay connected. Yes. It's not exactly. our jobs that keep us there. It's not our location that keeps us friends. It's nothing more than our actual desire to be with the consciousness that is that friend. Mm -hmm. But also mm -hmm. I have my inner circle and like the people who are part of my inner circle, I feel like I was meant to meet them. Like when I first met mm -hmm. all of the three that I'm thinking of, when I first met them, I was just like, huh, there's like something about you. I think I might know you for the rest of my life, which mm -hmm. I usually meet a lot of really great people. And I'm like, we're going to deviate at some point. Like, yeah. like right now, you and I are talking. Mm -hmm. but I have no idea how long we'll know each other. Exactly. How am yes. I, I can't tell. So I'm like, oh, will I know her for this long or this long? Or maybe we'll be like uh, colleagues for the next like 50 years. So we'll like, gr we'll be forced to kind of maintain a friendship, yes. which will be kind of fun, but also kind of like, I wonder what this will be like. Like I'm moving to Europe. Are we going to get coffee? We should get coffee. Mm -hmm. Like, do you know what I mean? But like, yes. am I making this as a, I'm, as, I don't know if you've heard me say this, but like my inner circle is closed. So I can't be anyone else's like 2 a.m. call because I have too many people mm -hmm. to take care of. But do I still want cool friends that I get to talk to other people other than my inner circle? Yes, of course, because like you're going to teach me something that they they don't have access to. Yeah. And I want to know that thing. But then what I've noticed in my journey is I'm having trouble. I negotiate with people because of this. What is a friend? What do you expect oh. of me? What is my obligation to this relationship? So it becomes almost transactionary in that way. But what I really mm -hmm. want it to be is symbiotic. I want us to both feel confident about the arrangement we have. Because mm -hmm. the last thing I want is my friend sitting in bed thinking, does Brittany really like me? And I'm like, just ask. But then the rejection point might be what they desire out of the friendship versus what I'm able to offer. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I'm really yeah. having a hard time with that constantly where i'm meeting the most amazing people during my calls during youtube half my youtube friends like what well, i i can't just like hang out with everybody all the time how am i ever exactly. gonna get my how am i gonna exactly. go on my library adventure exactly <laughs> yes 
Yeah. yeah but then I exactly. feel but but then I want to come back from that a year later, like a good anime like nomad, and then call everyone and be like, yo, I've been traveling. Who wants to get coffee? I'm back. You know, I want that luxury. But that's yes. a very oh, kind yes. of personality who can handle that. Because we yes. are told have brunch every Sunday with the girls. What girls? Horses? Yes. My neighbors are sheep. Who? What girls? Like, there are no <laughs> girls here. Like, there's no friends here. Yeah. So, again, my life has got to be orchestrated for me because no one has the playbook for it. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like that's your life? Yes. Yes. Definitely. Definitely. I definitely, uh, yeah, yeah. What you were saying about sort of wanting to go off and then come back and be like, okay, let's, let's have coffee. Definitely me. In terms of this idea... I'm terrible with virtual friendships. Mm. And so for me, it's like we meet in person, we do our thing, we have these amazing moments, whatever, we fight, what have you. Then we go off. We may not talk for like a year or so online mm -hmm. because I don't do that. I'm terrible at that. Mm -hmm. That's sort of where my ghosting comes in because Fair. I just I just don't do that. But then when we meet in person, it's like no time has passed for me, at least. Yeah. For me, it's like, that doesn't matter. But what matters is the now, what we do now, mm. like at this point in time with each other. So, yes. And I think that's, I found that with my friends hard for us to navigate together, for them to understand, understandably, that for me, at least, not texting, not phoning is not me not caring or right. not not wanting to be friends. Right, right. That's just what I do for a variety of reasons. And that's difficult to sort of navigate a friendship on that, especially a modern friendship. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And yeah. modern friendship can look so intimate in my bubbles. So I understand like people might get really confused about that as well. Like some mm. of my friends, like in the past, everyone knows I used to sleep with my friends. Not all my friends, just like the ones that we mm. mutually wanted to sleep. Like if everyone felt like, yeah, I'm attracted to you, you're attracted to me, let's do it. Otherwise, like some of my yeah. friends and I would have those conversations like, should we sleep with one another? And they're like, nah. And then we just don't. And it's fine. It never like phased the relationship. But I know in certain bubbles, like crash and burn like that would like destroy any relationship you have yes. with that person but mm -hmm. I figured those yes. people were never meant to be in my life then yeah because of the consciousness that I am I need someone who respects that I isolate or I go away sometimes I need people who respect the fact that I might be so like hyper focused on this one thing that I forget all my friends exist for a second I might be like you know what? I need someone to understand it's not Brittany isn't hating you Brittany is just like yeah. enjoying her life and yes. right now that doesn't involve you, but you're always like a part of it. Like I never forget my friends exist. I never forget my mom mm -hmm. exists. Even if I'm like, mom, I need a month off. Thank you. I love you. Like, I love you so much. Yeah. Bye. But like, you know, ready with our jobs. It's so, I don't know about you, but sometimes I wake up and I look at all my notifications and I just go, oh, mm -mm. oh yes. Every day. <laughs> I am so overwhelmed with like how many messages I get. And I don't even get that many. I'm not even that popular like I, that's why I always hope I never get famous because I'm like how do they do it you know what they do they just don't listen to anyone anymore that's the irony if people overwhelm the content creator then the content creator just ends up isolating more but if people aren't as like annoying then the the content creator can feel more like in the space like Joe Rogan all these celebrities I listen to all of them I go oh I just don't read the comments anymore and I'm like oh that sucks oh, yeah. I love my comments I love knowing what my community is thinking so like yes. I don't want to ever become so famous that I can't be in my community anymore. Yes, exactly. You know, and that's the most important thing: being able to talk with your community, with your people, with your bubble. That's how you. Yes. I don't want to say like sort of grow like in a progressive sort of linear way, but that's how you sort of really engage with the reality of the world, with yes. the chaos and everything, which yes. is really important. Uh, yeah. Which, yeah, yeah, I think that's, like you said, the irony and the contradiction of that. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's insane, actually. I've, uh, like, even so, like, one of my inner circle, everybody knows him as Q. Like, Q comes on my podcast a lot. And Q is, like, uh, he used to be a caller. Mm. And when we met, I was, like, something was weird about that caller. Like, I don't know what it was. Like, will I know him for the rest of my life or something? Like, I don't know what's the deal with this guy. And then, bam. He, like, has been to my house. He knows my siblings. He's my inner circle. I love him so much. But, like, we bonded over our desire to, like, explore concepts and ideas. And then to, like, radically understand that we live, like, different realities and in different bubbles. But, like, when we hang out, it's, like, 
it can sometimes be jarring, like, to have people in your life, like, have a distinct, like, difference from you. But then you know, like, that's the best part. But the worst part, even in your friendships, like, my sister and I, sometimes she'll be like, okay, I'm done. And I'm like, with what? She goes, this conversation, I'm going to go do something else. And I'm like, okay. (gasps) And, like, that's just how we talk. We're like, hey, I'm going to go. I would rather be doing anything else right now. And I was like, yeah, I think that's really honest. Mm-hmm. And I think I'm moving yes. more and more towards that way of having friendship where I just want my friends to feel okay saying, Britt, I love you, but like I need to do anything else. And I'm like, okay, bye. Yes. Because yes. I totally get it. Sometimes oh, you yes. just run out of spoons. But these friendships, these ones I hear from other people, the ones I used to think I'd have to have is like, oh, girl, thank God I've never been to a baby shower. Like I do not want to go to a fucking baby shower. Like in America, they do like these stupid games. I don't understand them where they have like chocolate in a diaper and like you eat the chocolate or something. And I'm like, I I, is that mimicking poop? I'm out. I don't know what this is. Like, I'm out. But, like, that's apparently so normal. And people are like, Brittany, don't you want to come to X and So's bachelorette party or this party? And I'm like, can I be real? No. My honest Brittany, I don't want to come. Does the yeah. Brittany that feels obligated by this bubble want to come? Kind of. But I don't want to go. Even with my exactly. own wedding, it got so stressful. I was like, canceled. My partner and I have decided we want to do our wedding, which is a small secular wedding with, like, five people max. Mm -hmm. it's too complicated it's like too much when I realize what I want to do I realize it involves a lot less people but again it's not about them I'm not rejecting my my family from my wedding I am choosing the wedding that I want yes but that's the problem is like everyone sees like when you go for what you want a rejection of the relationship you used to have like I have these people who are always like I can't wait till you're so successful at your job I was like so we can spend less time together and they're like what do you mean? I was like, oh, I'm sorry. Did you think I'd get more successful and have more time? Yes. exactly. Yes. No, you dumbass. Because they're thinking, I swear oh, to God, man. all my like younger siblings are like people in my life. They're probably thinking like, Brittany's going to be rich. We can go hang out all day. No, I'm going to be working. Like, I have to work. And so like that, that's the irony of all of life is like we always think we know what we want, but we don't understand the real consequences to it. Exactly. Very true. Very, very true. Yes. I had a very different image of YouTube before I actually did YouTube yeah. and it actually became my job. And now I realize, oh no, I'm not living the influencer life. Like it's, it's, it's not that at all. It's, they're not even living it. Of, yeah. Yeah. Exact, exact, exact. They're not even living yes. it. They so are true. so true. Yes. I tried oh, to yeah. do cooking no. videos once and I realized cause cooking is like my Zen place for me. It's me time. I tried to do cooking videos and I realized like it takes the joy out of everything. It's working. You literally are working. And so like yes. I love this and I try really hard not to get burned out. I don't know how Destiny never gets burned out. But I I am a burner outer. I burn out like every six weeks. <laughs> I'm tired and I don't want to do anything. And so a big part of it is like I I know that if I get more popular, I'm just going to have less time. And so a big part of me is like I don't want that. But then I won't have the money to have the life I want but then I won't have this but then I won't have this but then so what am I going to sacrifice and I hate to say it but like personal relationships take the back burner first because they're the only thing that doesn't bring me direct money yes (laughs) they only bring me direct joy but the joy I have enough in my own life is there to sustain me like the joy I hold as an individual is enough to currently sustain me and then now I have this partner that sustains it even more so it's kind of like, oh, the irony is so fucking clear to me. Like 2023, Brittany is like, oh, no, I'm going to try 10 percent harder. OK, to be better at my job. And I already know it's going to fuck up everything. <laughs> <laughs> I just know it. I just know it's going to fuck up everything. Yes. Which but is sort of ironic. a contradiction or just the human condition. It is just a contradiction. And it's yeah. just. You have to own it. You have to. Yeah. I think I think if I keep explaining it to people, everyone will get it. But it is one of those things where when we're looking for people who see us, I know they like my mom will never understand. Like my my nutritionist recently was like, take out your birth control. It's fucking you up. And I can just hear my mom going, I told you. But my mom's reasonings are religious and my nutritionist Mm. is medical. And so like. The irony, though, is like no matter how much I explain it to my mom, she'll always be like, I was right. I was right. I was right. Reinforce, 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 reinforce. So then it makes me like not want to tell her because it makes me like not want to hear it from her because she's not even mm-hmm. seeing me in this moment. She's not seeing that her daughter is under a medical stress issue that if she didn't have lupus, this shouldn't be a problem. But like all these problems are happening because I'm sick. But my mom doesn't believe I'm sick. 
So it's like oh. one thing over another. And so again, same thing with people who can't see you fully. So when you're dating, I have a requirement of 80% or more because I don't want to fucking explain who I am every day to the person I'm living with. Mm-hmm. Like I do with all my friends and family, which is not a bad thing. That's why I'm not marrying any of them. Because I have to explain myself to them, right? For you, yes. when you talk about partnership, and I know you're in your mid-20s, so it's like maybe different. Maybe, you know, you'll be a different person in your 30s, obviously. But like when you're looking for a person, do you have any idea what what qual- like what they have to have like qualified to be your partner? Like how do they qualify to be your partner? Go ahead and tell the internet so we can all date you. <laughs> okay. Oh. For me, it's it sounds very simplistic, very basic, but it is just. Accepting me for who I am, like really, I know it sounds so basic, but that is just something that I have always wanted, like since I was a child and I've never, ever gotten. Yeah. Um, With my relationships, I've tried to have that, hasn't worked. It's often what leads to them dumping me because I don't sort of fulfill the image of what they want, Uh, especially all of my partners have been very political and very much about sort of the personal is political to them. Whereas to me, it's not. No. Uh, politics is about trying to change reality. It's not about accepting reality. And it's not about accepting me as who I am. I gotta write that. It's about fire, girl. Write that down. <laughs> okay. And I think for me, it's always been about them not being able to change me, sort of making me that political thing um me not sort of it's often about me not uh, educating myself me not doing the work on myself Oof. to really realize sort of my internal x y and z mm-hmm. may need to do with race mm. um and so that's always been something that i've really always wanted somebody to actually just accept me as I am, as I am in this reality, a changing organism over time, just accept me as I am. Don't try to sort of yeah, change me. Um, yeah. You know, and that's, that's always, that's the dream for me. <laughs> and at this point in my life, only my friend who I have, my academic friend, he's the only one who's ever actually just seen me as I am and just be like okay and we can just be still together and there's no keeping up appearances there's no sort of you know it's just it's it's who I am it's like it's okay you know and that's just something that I've just never had ever and so yeah for me in terms of a relationship a partner that would be it for me. Haven't found that yet. Haven't had that yet. But yeah, who knows? The potentiality is so funny. And my, I had an ex-partner and one time we were having like a really rough time. And so we were sitting with his parents and the, his parents are so awesome. But he's like, they're like, okay, sit, like sit across from each other and look at each other in the face. And um, they asked him like, do you want Brittany to change? And he goes, no. And they go, Brittany, do you want him to change? And I went, yes. And he was like, oh, then I'm changing my answer. Yes. And I was like, oh, I was like, don't lie. Just we're trying to be honest. We're trying to have an honest. But he thought he was obligated to say, I accept you for who you are. But the truth was, is that neither of us could accept one another for who we were. We, we were waiting for that potential version of them to come and be a re- like realized. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I think in this this fir- relationship I have now is the first time. I have ever been accepted for the person that I am in this present moment. You said something earlier that made me, yeah. oh, I forgot to ask you, but like, I want to be in the present moment of Brittany. I recognize like Euro Brittany is going to be different than USA Brittany. How could it not be? Mm. I don't know what Europe's oh, going to yeah. do to me. I don't know what being there is going to do to me. I don't know how different I'll be, but man, I'm excited to see, but that means I'm cognizant of like in a few months, I'll be a different person versus mm-hmm. other people are like, I'm, I've always been the same. I've never changed. And I was like, mm. We all change, girl. And then if you don't really, then we got another problem. Like that's another problem, right? That's stagnation. I always dated for potentiality. 
always. Mm-hmm. I always dated for like, hey, I like who you are, but I'm going to like who you are better in two years. And they're like, oh, who am I going to be in two yes. years? I'm like, hopefully this person. Because like we liked each other. So we dated this guy now. I really like love him for literally who he is right now. I was like, if you never change, I'm good. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I mean? And there's always like things we're all working on, which is different. Yes. Than asking a person to fundamentally change. Exactly. Exactly. Right? Like, have you ever heard those? Yes. Um, Like, my mom will have this fantasy where she's like, one day you're going to meet an amazing Catholic man and he's just going to bring you back to Christ. And I kept thinking, like, what kind of deranged Catholic man would ever date me? Like, I looked at my mom and I was like, you know what I do on the Internet, right? She goes, yes, Betsy. And I was like, now imagine a wholesome Catholic man, for whatever reason, coming across my channel. What kind of a Catholic man would he be if he hit me up? Mm-hmm. Probably not a very yeah. good one. So he wouldn't live up to her standard. Like whatever fantasy life she has where I'm going to be like, you know, St. Augustine, where I like commit all the sins of the church and then come back to it. Maybe I just don't foresee it, at least for 10 to 15 years, because I have a very different goal and plan, which could deviate. But I'm, I doubt it. You know what I mean? Now, I'm very uh, agnostic in my reality, but very like in my heart, I'm an atheist. So mm-hmm. like I'm very open to the idea of God being real, but I, you know, I'm a doubting Thomas, so I got to meet him. Oh, yeah. He better be in my in my space with me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because otherwise, all of my like all of my life is not centered around religion. I don't see it as a part of my reality anymore. It mm-hmm. just can't be. Now, with your good yeah. Christian girl past, was it ever? Because based off what you said in this conversation, it was sort of enough to make you want to be good to people, nice to people, even in a detriment to yourself. But it sounded like it wasn't quite ever. I believe in God. Yes. Well, something happened. Basically, oh. my, I call her my adoptive grandmother, but she uh, got breast cancer and we were determined that, you know, you don't need doctors for like anything, least of all for cancer. Oh God. God's going to heal her. It's fine. And so for two years, I just watched her just dying and Oof. it was... It was just, it was the most bizarre experience seeing a human being decay so quickly. Like in terms, it it was as if just figuratively, like her brain had been eaten away. Like she was delusional. She was vomiting up blood. You know, I had to, with at least her carer at the time, we had to insert a catheter into her. And it was just the most, it was just the most bizarre experience. And for me, that just did not reconcile itself to there being a God. Why would God do this mm. to her? And especially to me, I mean, it just didn't make sense. Like I, I'd done everything right. I read my Bible every day, went to church, did, you know, good deeds, everything. And then this was happening. Didn't make any sense. Didn't, I just didn't understand it. And it wasn't sort of like I woke up one day and said, God doesn't exist. I don't believe. It was just a very fluid sort of actually no. Yeah. And I've been sort of with that ever since, just that no. But in terms of what it's taught me and at least the lessons and the metaphorical messaging within at least uh the bible yeah that resonates greatly with me um and i think i can't really get rid of that and so that still sort of pulls me in a bit but i do appreciate i think i appreciate the bible and everything it has to teach me from a far more theological rather than a religious perspective absolutely 100%. so yeah 100 yeah. percent. no mm-hmm. and that's why i think jordan peterson at least for me that makes sense that mm. his sort of relationship with christianity and with the idea of sort of morals and the idea of sort of finding meaning sort of interpreting certain stories certain miracles and seeing actually how does this relate to your average joe right now sitting in his room feeling like an insult sort of how can you find something in that and I think that's so important and I think for me that sort of 
taught me the value that you can find in religion, even if you're not religious, even if you're not uh, inclined toward believing in God. Yeah. There's still something there in sort of the stories that humans have told each other since the beginning of time. Absolutely. And I think we, I don't want to say sort of as a blanket statement, we've lost that, you know, um, woe is the modern world. But I think in terms of appreciating that, I think we we don't appreciate that as much. We don't appreciate as much what these stories, i.e. history, has and what it can teach us and what we can get from it and how we're sort of really connected to that mm -hmm. in a way that I think we're... Um, I think sometimes we are losing that, I think, with a lot of... I guess, critical theory, the idea that, or like postmodernism, the idea that sort of there's no truth, you know, history is that of like oppressors and everything mm -hmm. bad. And we're on the right side of history now. Um, I really don't buy into that. Mm. And I think that is sort of, that is sort of my religious reckoning sort of pulling me a bit in that direction because I can see the value in it. And I can see the value that people find in religion um especially so yeah it's a it's a weird relationship to god but maybe when i'm on my deathbed i'll for very selfish reasons and because of fear yeah i'll be like yeah i believe yeah but right now that's so far out of my like sort of view of myself and the world and my concept of time and my mortality, that is not something I'm thinking of. But I do think, not just for me, but I think in time, I think the West is going to go back to Christianity. I really do think that. Maybe not this century, but next century. I can really see that really resonating with people. Because mm. at the moment, I think there is sort of this abyss and a bit of this, uh, I wouldn't say nihilism, I think sort of uh, spirituality is filling the void for a lot of people. Um, yeah. Consumerism is doing the same. Mm. But I do mm -hmm. think that just with the rise of Jordan Peterson, there's definitely an audience who want that meaning, who want that sense of something higher than humanity, than yeah. this world, than this life. Yeah. That is really, it's there. And um, it'll be interesting to see but yeah, yeah. I uh, I wrote down the word wander, like wonder. Like I wonder if people, because something about Bible stories always makes me think like the universe is like, I'm, I feel like this great sense of wonder where I'm like, oh my gosh, like wow. Mm. And like there's something to be said about the way I was even raised. Like my, my dad like loves space and my dad's mm. just like space, Brittany. Like think about it, Betsy. Like space is like God created like this like infinite like you know he explains like space and like he'll go on he's an engineer i don't know he uses engineer words and he'll talk about space and i'm like okay and i'm like listening to him and i'm like cool and he's like so god and i'm like oh weird my brain went mystery mm. his brain went god mine goes cool mystery because like i don't know what's in space but he goes god's in space well god's not in space but god created space and so i'm like oh that's yeah. interesting like to look at a planet because like i will look at a planet you know like through a little telescope and i'm like oh <gasps> Like, we're, like, nothing. We're, like, little, like, energy beams on a planet. We're useless. Like, we could die. Like, we'll just, like, we're nothing. And my dad's, like, exactly. God. And I'm, like, damn. Okay. So then when I went on my journey, I had to ground myself without God. Mm -hmm. I had to feel okay in the chaos without God. Like, when shit hits yes. the fan, my parents go, God. And I go, cool. When shit hit the fan for me, I was, like, oh, no. There is yeah. no God. So oh, yeah. how do I ground myself? And I went straight into like, you know, Marshall Linhan's like radical acceptance. I was like, what does it mean to radically accept that I, I don't know anything? How does it feel to be like a Socratesian like idea thinker where I'm like, OK, I don't know anything. What does mm -hmm. that mean? Because I thought I knew a lot. I thought I really knew a lot. And you know what's even weirder about my brain is like, girl, I'll just forget it if I'm not focused on it. Like I went on Destiny stream and he was like, are you a reactionary? And I forgot what that meant. I was like, no. I do reaction channels, maybe. But, like, I don't know the lingo of bubbles if I leave them. So I mm. forget. Even Catholicism, I have to, like, stay updated because, like, I forget terms if I'm not consistently in it. 
which mm-hmm. is such a reinforcement to my idea of like, dude, when you live in a bubble, no matter who you are, it means you've forgotten that other people live differently and believe it so as much as you believe what you're believing. Yes. Like I yes. sometimes I'll say things like, I don't believe it. Like, I don't believe you. Like, I'll say, like, I don't believe you. What I'm really saying is I don't think you've thought this through enough to actually come to this conclusion so much as you landed on it. Mm-hmm. But people, even when they land on it, land on it with such blind faith that it is just as real in their life than that my life is. I just feel like I've spent more time on my life than they have. But really what they've done is spent enough time to find their joy in that world. Mm-hmm. So we're, we don't require the same things. Like, I don't require God to find joy, but I think my parents do. Yeah. And so when you know yourself enough to know what you need, you can start really eliminating things from your life you you thought you wanted or maybe just have it because you want it, like relationships. Um, I went on a lot of first dates in the last three years, like a lot of, hi, mm-hmm, okay, next and next and next. And everyone is like, Brittany, you're being picky. I was like, I'll find him. Ah, find them. It's not a big deal. And like I'm going through versus before I dated people just because they were there. Mm -hmm. We were having sex. It was great sex. So they're like, we should we we would make a great couple. I'm like, I'm not sure that's the same thing. Yeah. And I found out it wasn't right. Like I can have great Mm -hmm. sex with people I'm not in love with. But the dilemma is or that I am in love with to an extent. But I find that what I need comes from my desire to like um, quench my curiosity. Mm. So a partner Mm. that can help me like observe my curiosity with me and them too I think is much more something I need now than I ever thought I needed before so like before I thought I needed a person that I got along with but I got along with a lot of people so that can't be it and then I thought I needed a person who just like was the same political background as me like oh my god Mm -hmm. you said something earlier wait you said you dated people but because you weren't correct me if I'm wrong in accordance with like their relationship to race, I'm assuming you dated like maybe black people that were like really politically black or something. Yes. And it didn't, yes. and you didn't match up because you weren't oh, black yes. enough or something. Yes. Yeah. And white people are very, very left as well. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. I just, I want people to imagine this because I used to date politically. Oh, and I used to be nice. very much okay. like, you need to vote with me. You need to be the same as me. We need to have the same yes. conclusions. But I realized like, okay. I'm not even that politically involved anymore, but in my current relationship, it's more like, well, why did you do X thing? And if the Y makes sense, then I can accept the aftermath versus before it was, there is never an exception to this ever Mm -hmm. because this Mm -hmm. only means one thing. So when you talked about, hold on, you said something else. Oh, I should have written it down. Dating, being yourself. Okay. That's what I'm saying. So now I'm in a relationship where I can be absolutely unfiltered. Like, I mean, literally unfiltered. And this person just understands my perspective. Even if I say things that are so bad, Mm -hmm. so not a part of my character, maybe I'm upset and I'll be like, I'm really pissed, blah, 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 blah. And he'll be like, oh, that's really insulting, but funny, but clever. But I know you don't really think that. And I'm like, I know, but I'm venting. So other people in other relationships, they started to go, Oh my God, is Brittany like dangerous? Is Brittany like racist? Is Brittany like sexist? Is Brittany like anti feminine? Is Brittany like. They started to get afraid that they were dating someone they didn't see. They didn't know. You know when people say things like, I just woke up one day and realized I don't know who my husband is. And I'm like, what happened? So I'm trying to really recognize that a big part of it was that we're dating people that don't see us, but we're like okay with it until it, we're not okay with it. We're making decisions based off of politics, which comes from a bubble. Even racism itself is like one of my favorite bubbles because I'm like, this couldn't exist unless it existed. But it does exist. But how does it exist? And why does it exist? Like, I couldn't imagine. um, I dated a girl once who was like, you're white enough to date, but your sister isn't. Even though my sister and I basically have the same complexion. And I was like, I don't get it. She goes, "Uh, your sister just looks more ethnic. And she was raised by a really racist father who I met and was so perplexed about how racist he was. Like, he knew neighborhoods in L.A. that I didn't even know. He was like, oh, you went to X neighborhood? Is your friend black? I was like, yeah yeah how'd you know that and he was like that's a black neighborhood I was like how do you know that and then he was just like and I'm not from LA so I don't know LA very well but he was like yeah like I know that because I try to stay away from those neighborhoods and I was like oh we're just gonna say it out loud and then I talked to him about it I was like talk to me about your racism he's like well I feel like more than racism it's about survival I was like okay tell me about that you have one kid and you're not gonna have more and you're gonna die in about 15 years so 
what do you need to survive for? What is the point? And so we would have like open discourse about it. But to be honest with you, I was hoping she would change and she would be less racist and eventually by dating me would leave it all together. So I wasn't really in love with her, right? I was like hoping for a version of her that never existed. Yes. And I think that's what's yes. happening everywhere, even with friends, but especially in yes. relationships. And so yes. I think that's why I, I had to ground myself, like find a way to ground myself by just knowing what I needed and allowing people to move around that. Mm -hmm. Like even this here right now, I didn't realize people would be so hyped for this conversation. Like I got a <laughs> lot of people DMing me. And they're like, oh, my God, finally it's happening. I was like, oh, is there like an event I was supposed to like prepare? Am I like not prepared for this conversation? Because I just wanted to get to know you a little bit more and like shoot the shit. Yeah. But I have to then wonder, what is in the mind of the viewer that's like, oh, I've been waiting for these two to talk? I'm like, oh, what kind of conversation were we supposed to have? Oh, yes. Oh, that's daunting as well. Like, I wonder wow. if they're satisfied because, like, I had no intentions. Like, I now I feel silly that I was like, I just wanted to talk to her. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Yes. Where do these yes. expectations come from if not, like, some, some, like, script we've been given instead of, like, what do we really want? Exactly. I just want whatever's going to happen in this conversation to happen. That's what I want. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. Like, what did you want from this conversation? <sighs> oh. Okay, that's a difficult question. I think... Hmm. I really don't know. I think it's really, I have a really weird relationship with um, Brittany Simon that I've watched as a viewer for mm -hmm. years. And I've sort of moved from a position where at first when I watched you and I came across your video, I was like, this white girl in a turban like what what's going on here and, <laughs> and it sort of progressed from actually listening to what you're saying you speaking about the levels and me thinking oh okay this is just like a pop philosopher who's like trying to like sell this idea and then actually engaging with us and being like okay okay and then actually having things happen in my life not knowing where to turn for answers remembering something that you said and being like okay, right, let me introspect, let me get this, to like fangirling you and being like, oh my gosh, Britney is like everything, like defending you against the haters, you oh know, my, God, stop. my private account, like, you know, like boom, boom, boom. And then having to reconcile myself with, I think on one of your, like an earlier episode of, the, of your podcast, you said, you know, I want to be a mentor, but mm that doesn't mean that I'm not human. And mm. so don't put me on a pedestal. And there's always that contradiction when you put somebody on a pedestal because at some point you find out that they're human. Yeah. And you're speaking about sort of the relationship that people have had with Stephanie Myers and with JK Rowling. And it was so like, that blew my mind. And just looking at like Twitter today, it's like, mm. ah, yeah. Yeah. I, I can yep. see it. And for me, sort of going from that point of, sort of idealizing you and what you were saying and you being like sort of like my Nelson Mandela basically <gasps> Girl, having you stop. basically say to me <laughs> no, it's true it's true <laughs> having you say actually no I'm not Nelson Mandela I'm a human being and you know Nelson Mandela is a human being as well and he's flawed and people in South Africa are realizing that now that he actually wasn't that great of a guy is he's anyone, just a guy is anyone you know, yeah Exactly. At this point, I'm not convinced. Exactly. I'm not convinced. Exactly. Exactly. And it was reconciling myself to that and be like, oh, Brittany Simon is a human being. Yeah. You know, she's not a wise human being. She has wise moments and wise thoughts, like yeah. you said. And coming to that and then watching you react to a video of mine as well. You made a video. I think it was on my... Um, what was it? Uh, Something about dating, Johnny right? Depp, Amber oh, Heard. Johnny Depp. Yes, Amber Heard. Yes. yes. I was so one. mad at you, yes. girl. I was so I in this case, girl. <laughs> I know. You were so mad at me. But I think what really, like, I was really upset in the moment because you said, 
you know, I hate it when YouTubers play music over like their videos to try and hypnotize you and like yeah. keep you in. And I was like, so like, oh my gosh, like this this person who I've idolized, like she can't like stand me and everything. And then it was like, it took me like a week and I was like, you know what? You need to actually listen to what Britney has been saying and what you've been listening to Britney saying all the time. Like you've applied to other people and sort of like how they navigate the world. It's time for you to apply it to yourself, okay? If Britney doesn't like your music that you play over your videos, that's fine. That's totally okay. Britney has her reasons for not liking that. You have your reasons for liking that. It's true. That's fine. That doesn't mean that there's irre irre uh, irreconcilable yeah. differences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that it doesn't mean that you're shit or that she shit. Right. Like it's it's okay. It's fine. And at the same time, it's she's a human being. She doesn't like your music. That's fine. Yeah. That's a very human thing. And so it's sort of like looking at your mentors and your idols and being like, okay, like I can actually see myself in you insofar as being human. Like yeah. Brittany has things that she doesn't like. You have things that you don't like that she must like. You know, you love anime. I don't get anime. Makes oh. no sense to me at all. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And it's like, you know, that doesn't... It, that shouldn't be like the be all and end all and it shouldn't be something that is taken like sort of so seriously to like sort of the bitter end that it sort yeah. of ruins my association with you good so i'm so glad a very learning point for me even something as trivial as like sort of the background music and videos like made me have this sort of reckoning with myself and sort Absolutely. of how i viewed you parasocially mm -hmm. so did you ever yeah. think about reaching out to me that week and being like look bitch okay i'm more subscribers than you <laughs> i did i did i was so tempted oh my god the most i did was like i think i like put out a tweet um about it oh. um that I think that was the most I did. But as I said, I'm so passive that I wouldn't, it, it was just far beyond me to even like reach out. Yeah, uh, yeah, so yeah. So I was, um, yes. And it was sort of like a, it was a really weird moment sort of having you react to me. I was like, Brittany knows who I am. Brittany watches Oh my God, stop me. it. I'm I like, like Kidology what? knows who I am. Why does she know who I am? Like. <laughs> Why do we all think that as YouTubers? I always am shook when people know who I am. I'm like, huh? What's happening? Why do you know who I am? As if I have a secret YouTube channel that no one sees except the people that I know see me. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Like what? Why? I saw, exactly. I was recently on a, a like a conservative channel because I talked about Pearl and I was like, oh, why are they talking about me? And like my people are like, um, you're a YouTuber. I was like, I just, I just do not introduce me to the conservative bubble. I don't want the conservatives to know who I am. <laughs> like what? And I'm like, what if my dad watches this channel? And like, I'm freaking out. Right. But I'm like, I'm a YouTuber, Brittany. Like people can make videos about you. But in my head, only these people know who I am. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah but I, exactly. I, I, so we're good, right? Like I didn't like, we didn't. Oh, yeah. Okay. We're good. Okay. We're good. Okay. That good. was important for me. It was a learning experience for me. And it was like, it was introspective. Good. And it's like, that's fine. Yeah. Like that doesn't, that's sort of like the, the human, human's gonna human, as you say. Like, yeah. You know, Especially me. Especially exactly. me. Exactly. Pe people totally, I, okay, I'm working on a levels again video to, mm -hmm. to now that it's grown and everything. And now that I have better words, because people still think that like, they'll be like, Brittany, you have to do better. You're a five. And I'm like, okay, what does that matter? And they're like, well, because being a five matters. I was like, no, it doesn't. It doesn't mean anything. It literally is useless. I made it up. And like, it doesn't mean anything. And then people are like, but, but you're the one claiming you're a five. But I was like, but I also claim that being a five is the same as being a two. Like, it just doesn't matter. Like, it just can't matter because it just like, yes. it can't matter. Like, if you yes. think it matters, well, that ruins the whole point. I even say the language of the levels is like a two concept. Because if I was just a, uh, if I was a five without needing the language, I'd just be like, hey, we're all different and diverse and all of us go through things differently. And because we experience life differently, we're not going to come to the same conclusions. That is what the levels are. But then you yes. can't. You have to like make it into a thing. So I say, okay, so twos think, oh, yes. well, I don't want to be a two. I want to be a five. Okay, well then revert to the original. We're all different and we're all going to do things differently. 
the, yes. going back to the beginning of the conversation where we talked about chaos, like mm -hmm. chaos is because of freedom. If you don't want chaos, then who's going to rule and what laws are we all going to follow? Who is going to be the people that do not get an opinion? Exactly. Because yes. we're all going to want different realities. So who is the person? Exactly. And so again, yes. I can't talk just like a normal person because nobody hears me. But the moment I call it the levels, the moment I make numbers, the moment I say bubbles a lot, oh, Brittany's You're doing a cult her, leader. Yeah, well, that one too. You're a yeah. cult leader. Oh, yeah. You're yeah. doing something different. But then uh, oh, yeah. you, you, I just watched your video. Uh, the left should do better, that one. In yes. the last 30 seconds of the video, I think, or the last two minutes, uh, the girl says, you're in a bubble. The like trans girl or feminist girl or something. Somebody says to somebody, you're in a bubble. I don't know yes. what video that was. And I was like, oh, see, I hear it. I know people are using it, but everyone's only ever using it as an insult. Like, you're in a bubble, which means you're missing something. But yes, you're in a bubble. What am I missing? It's a great philosophy. Like, in it takes a lot of, I think, openness to say, what am I missing? Yes. But I think, yes. again, because I don't want to shatter people's ability to be free and choose a religion or something, I don't think it's my job to, like, convert people out of religion or convert people more my way or convert people. I just want people to be joyful in whatever bubble they choose. And I just want to be happy in mine. <sighs> like the exactly. one I made like I just want to live in mine too so I hope we can do that but the problem is is I think my work will probably be centered around this for the next like 20 years if we mm -hmm. really want freedom we have to be okay with chaos how are we okay with chaos we have to ground ourselves yes but I think that exactly. is I, again I have to create a lingo and then I have to create like a a bubble so people will understand like oh I'm jumping into Brittany Simon's bubble now Yes. Because we can't just have yes. the conversation. Nobody wants to have the actual conversation. Exactly. Exactly. That's the problem. Yes. How did you feel you. when, um, what's his name? Salinger went after you. Uh, sorry, who? Is that his name? Salinger? Salinger? D -D -J -D? What's the He's a black guy. F.D. Signifier. That one. Why do I call him Salinger? Yes. I'm I don't sure. know. My probably my dyslexia yes. seeing his name in my head and that's the name I came up with. But that guy, when he went after you, I thought that was really interesting because I'm like, oh, because I wanted to watch him for a while, but he's too progressive for me. Mm. Like there's certain mm -hmm. progressive voices I can't handle. It sounds like it sounds the same as listening to a conservative. I just get like a headache <laughs> because it's the same. It's just talking points. Like I'm like, where is your opinion? Like you're a real yes. thought. So what did it feel like having mm -hmm. somebody with an obviously a script go at you the way he did? And he had other buddies with him, didn't he? Oh, yes, yes, So yes. you got piled on. How did that feel? Oh, oh, gosh. Yeah, that was a lot. I think for me, it wasn't the getting piled on mm -hmm. in as much as I sort of came to the I made this video about the left mm -hmm. and then they made a video response and that was fine. I was like, okay, you've done your thing. I've watched this. I can take that. The issue that I had was primarily with their attempt to psychoanalyze me. And in mm. the comment, this very fabricated um, psychoanalysis of me being self-hating, anti-black, um, a turf because I live on turf island, um, just all these sort of things. And especially creators who i also watch in the comment section like big oh, creators saying wow. uh you know used to watch her don't anymore because she doesn't uh she's not progressive enough or she's not this or that or you know she's a turf and it's that was very disappointing for me i think insofar as i found myself at least in my responses being very willing to say okay i'm going to put myself aside for a second i'm going to take myself out of my shoes and i'm going to put my feet into your shoes into your world into your reality even though those shoes don't fit me they weren't made for me they're not for my feet i'm going to squeeze my feet in there and i'm just going to see everything from your perspective i'm mm. going to read what you read i'm going to read your sources your data your I'm going to see the world through your lens of reason, which is sort of belief presented as fact and truth. Mm -hmm. And for me, I think the thing that really affected me and sort of shook me after that was that they weren't willing to do the, to do the same thing. They weren't willing to take themselves out of their shoes. Right. 
and sort of put my shoes on. And I guess maybe it's naive that I sort of have this hope that that's what we'll be able to do, sort of at least when we talk to people, when we have conversations, when we disagree, that it is sort of, you know, you have your bias, you have your prejudice, you have your bubble, you have your projection of what reality is for you and therefore for everybody else. But at some point when you talk to people, you're faced with another consciousness, another reality, yes. another representation of the world. And in order to make it work in order to sort of make something out of the chaos that is a completely different experience confronting and challenging yours mm -hmm. like you know you've got to swap shoes you've got to try on different shoes you know you've got to somehow make it work yeah yeah and I found that they weren't willing to do that and that was what got to me mm. that sort of and it was somehow all my fault that that it wasn't happening that the conversation and dialogue wasn't happening because it wasn't a dialogue that was a dialogue of me saying I accept that I'm this that and the other I accept that you know you all know me better than I know myself yeah um I definitely wanted to approach them from I think very much sort of my my allegiance to the levels that idea of sort of appreciating that we have yeah. different bubbles different realities but like you know we can still talk we can, we can still learn from each other and it's like I want to learn from you I will try my best to learn from you yeah. and what you see and how you see things please do the same for me and that just wasn't there that reciprocity that I really value and I think is so important to just being a human and sort of realizing actually None of us has the truth. None of us really knows. None of us is really as great yeah. and boring as we like to think we are. None of our experiences and none of our individu individuality is really that important. Like, okay, you're a transgender person. You have your experiences. Okay, that's great. You know, yeah. I'm a black woman. I have my experiences. Right. None of us is really shit. We're just people. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. So I think that was for me what frustrated me a lot that unwillingness on their part and also them not wanting to talk to me they don't want to talk <laughs> to you at all like did you reach out do they reach out or is there like did they say yeah like before this whole thing happened like fd signifier he emailed me wanted to speak to me i said yes let's do it then he didn't respond i was like okay okay, okay. fine then this video happened um, mm -hmm. a long time after, like a year after that. And I was like, okay, well, I want to talk to you. Okay. We sort of arranged to talk, but then he ignored me mm -hmm. again. And I feel, and he's told me, like, he wrote this long email telling me not to speak to Destiny or to Vosh or these, like, content farmers, all these people who are just going to try to make content out of me. He wants to talk to me in a safe space where we talk just privately. and not sort of in front of an audience not live whatever um i don't know if things have changed now but it just did not make sense to me at least not in the way of i think politics firstly politics you have to talk to people you don't agree with you have to speak to your enemies yeah. if you want to change the world and change reality and get everybody on board you have to speak to everybody yeah the people you don't agree with whatever you have to like face face the music so that makes no sense there's no there's no safe space in politics. I think there's only safe space in your private life and your private mm. world. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it didn't make sense <laughs> to me, but I'd like to speak to him. Um, but he's been quite aloof. Uh, so <laughs> Isn't I that so that's interesting? Happen. That's happened to me too, where like people are like, oh yeah, let's collab. And then I never hear from them again. I'm like, weird. But like some people, that's yeah. why I, I take note. I do take note. Like, literally, when yeah. I emailed ABBA to first collab with him, he got back to me, like, right away. When I emailed Destiny, he got back to me right away. When, like, when I emailed you, you got back to me, like, right away. And so I was just like, oh, my gosh. Like, that that means so much to me that people are making an effort because I really think, like, you're real people with real jobs and you're busy. So I really appreciate, like, the thoughtfulness. But, okay, I want to really fast. This is what is so ironic about, like, every bubble. So um, this, So if you look at them and the way that they are unable to, like, jump into your shoes, 
It's also, it's so amazing. So one time when I was explaining the levels to my siblings and our family friend who's a priest, um, we were sitting at a table oh, wow. and, I, and like my sibling, oh, he's the best. He's like a year older than me. He's like great. And we love talking about philosophy. That's like our favorite thing to do together. So mm. we have dinner a lot. And so we were having one of our dinners and my sibling goes, hey, tell them about the levels. And I was like, Bleh! and he goes, do it, do it. And I was like, Ugh. okay, I'm not here to make a fight. But I'm gonna prove God's fake. Let's go. And so, like, we all have this like conversation. And I was trying to explain to them that, like, look, in order to leave your bubble and to go into a new bubble, you have to like bubble hop to kind of be introspective to understand like how unreal our realities are before we start to realize like what could even be real. And so the priest goes, So just to clarify, I would have to basically sin against God in order to be more introspective. I was like, yes. And then my brother was like, yeah, I'm out. I'm not going to like betray God so I can maybe find something else. The same way I feel about progressives on the left who won't talk to certain people or like ban conversation. What they're really saying is I can't sin against my church in order to maybe find something new. Because if I find that thing is new and think about it, my, the priest never even kissed a girl, not even once girl. He knew he wanted to be a priest at 12. He's one of those like golden gold star priests. Wow. <laughs> he's really only ever been. So I'm looking at him. He's very, I think he's like nerdy handsome in a way that I like in a man. And I'm looking at him and I'm like, you could have been a great dad. And he said that. He's like, Brittany, if I ever find out that this religion isn't real, I'll probably be a little sad that I never got to be a father. And I was like, and in my head, I was like, see, I can't tell him it's not real, even though in my head it's a construct and it's made up by a bunch of people who agreed this is what religion's going to look like. Mm -hmm. but he feels like he really knows God is real based off of like science. But then when he mm -hmm. explains the science, it still is so much faith. Yes. And so again, what I'm really seeking is like a reality I can hold a reality that I can really understand. So I can say, I know it, but otherwise I mm -hmm. don't know any of these things. I'm like relying on other people to know them and to tell me, which is fine. Yes. So same with the leftists. I feel like so many of them were like, I don't know what journey you're on, Brittany, but I feel like you've become like someone I don't recognize. I'm like, exactly. But I'm still the same consciousness. I'm still the same good person. I'm still trying my best. I'm just maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like when I'm in a relationship with my partner, the person I'm supposed to trust more than anything, if I can't say certain words, or if I can't be a certain way, or if I can't express myself in a certain way, I'm going to feel trapped again. Right? Right? So when I say exactly. I want a bubble where I don't feel trapped anymore, that means I can say things that might be a dog whistle in someone else's ears. But in mine is just like within the context of this reality makes sense. Yes. Yes. But again, how can I ask somebody to like threaten their livelihood? They won't have friends anymore, girl. They won't have communities. They'll be just like us. Who is my friend? What is a friend? Well, yes. they all know. Yes. They all know yes. what it is because as long yes. as they follow in tow, as long as they follow the script, they'll always have communities. Yes. And that's something I have to accept that I found hard to accept in these past two weeks, accepting that that is how they navigate reality. That is how we all navigate our reality. That's how I, in my own way, do my reality. Yes. And it is that sort of, that trying to confront the chaos and understand yes. the chaos and then realizing that you don't understand it and you'll never be able to really understand it. But like, that is the human condition. And I think, you know, that is, yeah, it's a challenge, but that is, it is what it is. But I don't it mean that in a bad is. way or in a, oh, it is what it is. I yeah. Mean it, a, it is what it is. Uh, so yeah, I would never yeah. want to take away any of their joys. I've been involved with so many different, like amazing people throughout my life, but when our roads were supposed to deviate, they just had to deviate. But I really mm -hmm. wish like the one regret I have is that, um, <clears throat> I think I, maybe with one or two of them, like past friends or whatever, I wish that we could have talked about why we can't be friends anymore. And I, without politics being the reason because if politics is a construct that we're now just living in this present moment in but does not isn't something we want to continue then why are we ending friendships on something that isn't going to continue if we get our way like if we get our way and we all get along and there's like tolerance then why can't we be friends because i'm pro all the things you're pro i just don't believe in your methods to getting there i don't agree with the path it's not that i don't agree with the conclusion that everyone should be loved and accepted I just don't agree with the path, but they're yeah. like, there's one path. And I'm like, oh, just like the one path to Christ. I'm like, why are you limiting yourselves? Like, why are we limiting? 
right? But again, I'm exactly. so I'm so pro freedom that a part of me is like, I hate this, I hate this, I hate this. I love that you're happy. So I can hate it all I want, but I'm not here to push my agenda onto other people. Like, I don't want people yes. to have my life, girl. My life is very for Britney. Yes. It's just very for me. I don't recommend it for most people. But at the same time, I think the path that I took to get here, I think most people would quite enjoy. Mm -hmm. Even if they only went on it for a little bit. They don't have to come to the same conclusions. But I think that if they ask themselves, like, do I actually want to dress this way? Start there. Do I really want to wear these clothes? And then where am I willing to, like, die on this hill? Like, I, at work, I'll dress how I want. Like, I'm mean, not dress how I want. Sorry. I'll dress according to, the like, the rules. You know, like, even mm -hmm. for YouTube, I'm always like, does this show my nipple? Is this see-through? Half my clothes are see-through, girl. So I'm like, okay, is this YouTube appropriate? And, like, I come in from the camera and I check the lighting. And I'm like, I'm always worried because in my everyday life, I'm not thinking about whether my nipples are showing. I'm at my house. Mm -hmm. So, again, I'm willing to be a part of a society where I have to change a little bit. I think that's good. But we shouldn't. I'm surprised the leftists are so secure on the hills they die on when their parents are dying on the same ones right now. Just it looks different, but it's the same. It's the same mm -hmm. hill. Like if our parents are going to die on the hill of not pronouncing people correctly, like why are you dying on the hill of pronouncing people correctly? Oh, very, very good points. I just yes. don't get it. I know I'm sure it makes sense. I just don't get it. Yes. But I'm sure it makes sense. Yes. I just don't get it. Now, I have to ask you two questions. How is your mm -hmm. bladder doing? <laughs> uh, you know, I have an unusually large bladder. So uh, I have an unusually time. small one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I really want to pee. But then I want to also ask you, um, do you have any questions for me that you want? Because I've been asking you a lot. I don't want you to feel like, you know, you, I'm right here in front of you. So if there's anything you've wanted to talk about. Um, Maybe. Yes. Well, I think you I think you've sort of answered my questions. I had two uh, just sort of about your bubbles mm. and which bubble gives you the most joy. Mm -hmm. um, I think I've sort of gotten an idea based on what you've said. And like also, I guess what I've sort of like watched recently of your content. Um, but in terms of you just saying what you want to say, um, unless you want to go to the bathroom, uh, completely understand. <laughs> I think I can hold it another 20 minutes. Okay. And then I'll pee. Yeah, but I figured because that way it'll be easier on my editor. He doesn't have to go through and cut me out and all that stuff. Okay, yes. so then I'm curious. Well, you wanted to ask me about my favorite bubbles or like the bubbles that bring me the most joy? Yes. Like what bubble brings you the most joy like that? Uh, okay, so honestly, my favorite bubble is the one I made. That is the only mm -hmm. bubble that 100% always brings me joy. And then uh, other bubbles facilitate and add to that joy. And then sometimes they take away from that joy. So I try very hard to be very balanced with when I'm spending time with other people. So I think mm -hmm. like a bubble is created the moment me and existence have a relationship uh, in a very particular way. So if I'm like the nature bubble and I'm chilling with a bunch of like animals out in a, fair, a forest and there's like no human beings, I'm in the nature bubble. And now I am at the mercy of the bear. Or the mercy at the whatever cougar lives in this forest. Like, I am at the mercy of, this is not my bubble. I didn't make this bubble. I'm visiting this bubble. So mm -hmm. I love to visit the nature bubble. But I'm not going to lie and pretend it doesn't give me gray hairs and anxiety that I'm going to get attacked by a bear sometimes. So I love that bubble. But see how it doesn't quite make me feel at peace and relaxed and safe? Because I'm kind of on edge with what existence could be interacting with me. That's how I feel about every bubble. I feel like that about mm -hmm. my job. I feel that way about life. I feel that way about my family. I feel that way about I, – I don't love existence. My favorite part about it is ex existence is obviously my partner because he is a part of existence. He's interacting with me, and I'm interacting with him. But otherwise, I always have some level of anxiety, mm -hmm. even with my friends and family that I love so much, which is why, like, we've really created a negotiation system that allows us to say, I'm going to go do something else. Mm -hmm. even sometimes i'll go visit my like siblings like i'll go to california to visit my family and i'll say oop we've had too much time together i'm gonna go take a walk my parents have five acres so we just go oop we're gonna take a walk like we're gonna separate it's not a rejection it's a i'm losing spoons and i love you so much but you're not actually giving me any you're taking them away but not because you're a bad person mm -hmm. we're just not vibing right now right i think a lot of people mm -hmm. think if you're friends or family or even in love they should always 100 be a good source of energy. Mm -hmm. 
as if they're not also human and they also don't have bad days and they also don't have grumpy moments. Like, so I've really tried to accept that every bubble I visit will always be a part of giving me joy or not joy, depending on how I am approaching it. So the responsibility does fall on me to uh, remove myself when I'm done or to Mm -hmm. be a different version of myself. Like when I was in Miami visiting like Abba and Destiny Molina and everybody, it was so fun. And I'm in a new bubble that's not mine. I'm like, okay, Miami bubble. Like never been here before. Florida bubble, never been to Florida. Let's go. And, you know, Abba's telling me stuff and Steven's telling me stuff. Melina, they're all showing me different parts of Florida and I'm having so much fun with them. But I was not in the bubble I chose. I was in a bubble I chose to visit. And mm-hmm. I'm visiting with this idea. So I I made sure my spoons were good. I went, Melina took me to the beach to hang out with hippies, which I haven't done in so long. I was in a crowd of like hundreds of people. And I was like, whoa, I haven't been outside in a long time. Like I've been definitely like in my house. And then Abba took us skating. We went rollerblade, like roller skating. Like it was so oh, yes. fun. I remember you speaking about that on Destiny stream when Abba hit you. That was great. It was, yeah, was so weird. fun. And I was just like, oh my God, like we were having so much. And I'm like, this is not stuff I do in my life. But mm-hmm. um, after we streamed with Steven, I remember a comment really stood out to me because I, I really like it bothered me, but I wondered why it bothered me. And the comment said, um, there's no way this girl has an autoimmune disorder. There's no way she's way too energetic. And I was like, oh. So at first I was really upset because my autoimmune disorder is making me really upset as a person. I'm just like having a very hard time with it, but I'll get past it. It's not a big deal. Millions of people do this every year. Okay. But I'm still being like a baby about it. And during that stream, I was like, Brittany, you're going to go do the stream and you're going to put every fucking spoon you have into the stream. So you are a good guest and then you can crash later because none of your friends will care. And that's what I did. I like went into that stream. I put all my energy into it. And then when we hit dinner, I was like, and they're like, Brittany, I was like, I'm awake. And then like my rash was out because my autoimmune disorder, like I was like a mess by six o'clock. I was like, <laughs> I look like trash. And I was literally like, and they're like, Brittany. And I was like, oh, and like here I am with my YouTube friends and I should have even more energy, but they yeah. all know I'm sick and they were all so good about it. Like they didn't judge me. They still had me. I still came out with them. They like, they allowed me to be myself, right? But the internet, Mm -hmm. that really frustrated me, that comment. But then I realized, like, also compliment because I ended up doing what I was supposed to do. I gave my all to work. And then my friends got subpar Britney. You know what I mean? But since they are my friends and they accept me, they didn't have a problem with it. It didn't even Mm -hmm. phase them. It feels like it didn't even phase them. So my favorite bubble is always the one I made for myself because it's the only time that I can just be unfiltered and by myself. And then my partner is exceptional because he's the only other person who, again, can be in my bubble. But still, like, if, I, if I'm if i having, like, a low spoon day, maybe because of work, I, I don't always do very well even with his company. Mm-hmm. Not that I don't want it, but I sometimes just need to take a shower and decompress. And, like, well, if he follows me to the shower, I'm not really decompressing, am I? So, again, my favorite bubble is always the one I made. But, man, I, I'm so glad I can bubble hop and visit because, like, what a blessing. Mm -hmm. Like what a skill though. And it has to be on me. The responsibility of that bubble hopping to have a good time has got to be on me. I'm the only person who knows my spoons, right? I'm the only person who can tell like, oh, I'm going to get like, I'm not going to have fun in like the next 30 minutes if I don't get some water or food or I'm going to become like a bitch in about 45. And I usually tell my people like, hey, Brittany's about to get Hank. I told, who was it? Someone in Miami. Oh, Abba. I guess Abba was like, Brittany eats so much. I was like, if you don't get me food right now, I'm going to grab you by that hair of yours and just slam you to the ground. I'm going to get so angry. And he looked at me. He's like, I don't need food that often. I was like, (laughs) I was just like freaking out. And I was like, I need food. Like, how do these people live with no food? And so he was like really sweet and we got food and stuff. But like, I'm I'm trying to be as open and honest about my me because I know I'm Mm. the problem. Like, I know I'm the problem. Ultimately, I think we're all the problem. Yes. And so if I just like focus on myself being the problem, I can fix it without diving into Brittany's the problem literally. So she should kill herself. Like, don't go. Okay. Don't go that far. But know that you're probably the one who's going to ask someone to deviate the plan. And if you're going to be the one, make it make it okay for people to deviate their plan, Mm -hmm. including me. So when people ask me to deviate from my plan of isolation, you better have a plan of why you're asking me to do this. Mm-hmm. And it can't just be because I want your attention. Okay, you selfish bitch. That's nice. And that's what happens, by the way, is everyone goes, join my bubble so you can be a part of something I've done. So you can also validate that what I'm choosing is right. I'm the only person who lives in my bubble. I don't need other people to tell me I'm right. I did all this work to make sure that I'm happy and joyful. And being right, well, that's just lucky. 
You're just yeah. lucky if you're right. Like the conservatives, when they guessed that uh, masks weren't going to do shit, that was lucky. They didn't know that. <laughs> that was luck, girl. They oh, did yeah. not know that. They didn't know that. Please, their surgeons don't wear masks. Okay, so they must have thought it was useful at some point. They just yeah. got lucky yeah. with that whole like mask statistic, which is fine. Like I don't even, I didn't even wear masks or get the shot for like two years. I was like, ah, I don't leave my house. But then I eventually got it to travel and stuff. So again, it's like, what is my favorite bubble? The one I made for myself. So I don't have no headaches. <laughs> Brilliant answer. Wait, what about you yeah. though? Because you haven't made yeah, one, what... technically. Yes, that's why I wanted to ask you because I think that's what I aspire toward. Mm. Toward making my own bubble. Yeah. But not because I want to sort of just validate my idea exactly. of my world and my reality, but because it'll give me joy. Exactly. And I haven't found that yet. That bubble that gives me joy, that sense of being that gives me joy. Mm. And I will. Uh, yeah, sorry. I wanted to clarify that my bubble that I made for myself that brings me the most joy is when I'm alone. Mm hmm. So it's not this bubble. I love this bubble. This is my second favorite bubble. Yeah. YouTube is my second favorite okay. bubble. And I love my Discord. Mm -hmm. I love that bubble. But when I'm alone or with my partner, because he integrates into my bubble really smoothly, that's my favorite bubble. So then the mm -hmm. question I have for you, are you looking for a bubble? Or are you going to make the bubble with yourself? Or do you think you need other people to be a part of the bubble for it to be joyful? Every answer is a good answer. Oh. I think when I think of the moments that have given given me the most joy or the most access to joy, it's involved me being with my closest friend and just being with him. That's when I'm just the most, I'm just still with myself and with this person. And it just mm. feels so... It feels so unimportant, but the unimportance of it and just the naturalness of it is just so important because it's just so foreign to everything else that I experience, to all the other standards and expectations that I place on myself, that other people place on me, that other bubbles, etc. And so if I can get that in sort of making a bubble on my own mm. where I can get that sort of joy that sort of stillness that would be incredible I don't know if I can get to that point on my own I don't know what that would mean but I also I also know that I'm very young and that I'm also very impressionable and very susceptible to the opinions of others and I'm very passive I'm very insecure and so I can't really say that that's never going to happen because mm -hmm. at least where I am now, if I think about where I was like five years ago, like I, I'm not even the same person. Like it's just, it's like totally. two different people. Totally. It's incredible. I don't know what's going to happen in five years time. And so I can't sort of look at it with doom and gloom. Mm. I just need to sort of look at it like, you know, something, something amazing could happen or something like could change really mm -hmm. dramatically. Like you said on one of your streams once, you said you can't wait for Britney in her 40s. Like that's going to be your era. I'm so excited. And <laughs> exactly. And I've never heard anybody describing like sort of their 40s or like getting older or like a new chapter or a different chapter of their life being like that. Like yeah. looking at it from that perspective. And that's something that I really want to do and really need to, I need to do that just for myself Yeah. in order to sort of just like keep going. Uh, so yeah. yeah, yeah. I think um, you said something earlier, I wrote it down and then you just said something again that made me think about it. You know how, um, and I think this happens to all of us, all humans are susceptible to this, myself included. Um, mm -hmm. You know, when you're just like, let's say you're on Instagram looking at really hot girls and you're like, man, could I ever look like that? And then all of a sudden you're like, could I get a nose job? Could I straighten my hair? <gasps> could I do this? And they're like, do I want to be a hot girl? And they're like, wait, could I even be a hot girl? 
it's like a weird question to ask yourself. Like, could I, why do I have this desire when I didn't even want it five minutes ago? Oh, it's screen addiction. No, I think it is a something in us because we're herd animals where we want to be like the people we think are pretty or nice or smart or interesting or, and then we want to be one of those people. Like, I want to be a pretty girl. But like at the same time, like I'm not really willing to do what it takes to be pretty in this bubble. So I'm going to be pretty in this yes. bubble. Right? Mm-hmm. So it's like, where do I feel? I, it's like, literally, it's like you're making your like little character, like your avatar. But then you're, you know, it's like, which, like, oh, I listen to punk rock music. Cool. Which one? I listen to classical. Great. Which one? Which bubble are you in? It's like, they're all so diverse and awesome. So I think about that happening to all of us at all times, including one of the things I struggle with is like that social norm of... Uh, yeah, you can't just go away for years at a time. I'm like, can't I? Can't I? And then I'm like thinking, I'm like, how do I make this happen without it being a rejection to everybody in my life? Like even going to Europe, funny enough, my parents are really happy for me, but I think it's because now they don't have to deal with the reality of their daughter who isn't like them being close by. Mm-hmm. Now they get the reprieve of, well, she's in Europe doing Europe things. So not my problem, Right. But if yeah. I'm close by, and then I feel it when I'm close by, I feel a desire to conform to my parents. Like I call Destiny to ask him, like, "Hey, uh, what do you think about a religious ceremony, like a blessing?" My parents are like, they'll find a, I can find a loophole so my parents can recognize my husband as my husband. But the problem is, I'm not doing the loophole for us; we're doing it for them. Mm-hmm. But then they don't want me to do it just because it will e- appease them. They want me to do it because I want to. So now we're at yeah. a crossroads mm. where we're looking at each other and we're like, "Cool, I love you." But it looks like we're going to go away for a while. Yeah. You know? And so it's like it's like this struggle of asking ourselves, like, do we actually want these things? Or are we just in a bubble right now where having those things would benefit us immensely? Which yeah. is why I like my bubble the most because I really just have to do what I want. I really just have to live within yeah. my values, which sounds crazy. Um, but I also think it's um, – I think there's an unhealthy version of this, like an isolated – toxic isolation where you're like the world sucks and I'm the only one that's smart and I'm the best it's not like that it's like the world is great I love you so much just like Netflix though I need to switch over to Hulu today so I'm gonna like reject Netflix but like I love you I'll check back later like I'm just switching the channel exactly that's it yes. I'm not trying yes. to uh cast judgment I'm trying to just change the channel because I have a limited life and I'm gonna die and I would like to experience different things Yes. But if I just see the same yeah. group of girlfriends for brunch every weekend, mm-hmm. that's great, but that's not fueling my desire for curiosity. My curiosity isn't being satisfied. Yes. And so yes. I think that's what people miss is like they – it feels really good to have friends, but then you always wonder, what if we did this? What if we didn't go to brunch every weekend? What if we did skating? Getting Destiny out of the house to come skating took like a good 20 minutes, okay? <laughs> It took a good 20 minutes. I was like, Melita has her skates. I have my skates. Eva has her skates. You better put on your skates. And like, we're all like basically bullying him. He's like, fine, I'll fucking go. And we're like, you better go. But like oh for him, wow. right? That's like a big deal to get wow. out of the house, to go yeah. do something. And then I told Abba, I was like, look, I, I have skates and I would never go skating unless you made me go skating. So I'm so glad you made me go. Yeah. That's why we have to hang out with different friends. <laughs> So we can do different things. And at the same time, Mm -hmm. your friend could just be somebody you have at like, I don't know, a yearly conference, a yearly VidCon or or MythCon or Comic-Con. Yeah, exactly. I'm good with all of those, girl. I love going to Comic-Con bubbles. (sighs) So fun. But like not my, like not my, I don't do this every day. This is not my life, Mm -hmm. but I love to visit. Sorry, that was a really Mm -hmm. long monologue to bring it back to like something you brought up. I don't even know when, but it made me... It made my brain go, oh, like when you said you were impressionable, weren't we all? Yes. Yes. Even me? I'm just saying, like, even me, I'm so stubborn. I'm like, I don't want to do it. But I'm like, but maybe I want to do it. Tell me again why I should do it. You know what I mean? Yes. Yes. But I think it's then also getting back to that point of, like you said, that example of scrolling on Instagram, like sort of, okay, asking yourself all these questions. At some point, it is a matter of, okay. Now, what do I actually think without all of this influence? What happens when I put my phone down and I sort of go back into my world? And I think that that can be difficult. It can be difficult to sometimes just put the phone down. So hard. And yeah. So I think that's 
that's something that's a point that I want to get to where I can just put the phone down I can just be like okay that's their bubble that's their world Mm. and then in my world you know I can be an Instagram model whatever you know it's sort of (laughs) you know all these things it was like I was thinking when you were saying that about sort of being beautiful or attractive in your bubble say Mm -hmm. I was thinking of um that recent story about that police officer, her, and then all these oh, other police officers yeah. got fired because they did a train yeah. and all of this. And the internet was going wild because according to the internet, like she's average, she's not pretty, mm-hmm. she's not anything. Mm-hmm. But then in her bubble, like what you were saying, like I was thinking like in her bubble. Good point. She's the shit. Good you know? point. In her bubble, you know? And it, it's just, it's so interesting to look at it like that because then it sort of just shatters this whole worldview about, yeah. you know, this very red pull idea about beauty and looks and attraction and sex and sex appeal and it's like you know life is just so much more nuanced and complicated and just we can't explain it like it just it's wild like that story is wild but that made sense to those people in that bubble in that world with that police officer you know it's so it was just it was interesting it's interesting to see the world like that yeah because that is that's a great I mean, point is, like I said, yeah. yeah no that's a great point and i i'm like so critical about looks only because i think people are just like animals and so i'm like look we're basically asking again who is the cutest bear and i kind of <laughs> feel like it's kind of a weird question but it's also a great question because there are some ugly bears i've seen them and so like i'm like okay there are like a difference and it's like it's really what i think people are seeing is like the warmth or the not warmth in people Mm -hmm. so like i saw that girl and i was like i bet she's pretty warm even if she's pretty plain versus pearl is plain but she's so cold that i'm like i don't Mm. get it but then in her circles maybe pearl is beautiful because men want cold women who seem distant because that means they don't have a high body count Mm. versus if you feel too warm maybe you come off as slutty and so you're less loved like, everyone always does this thing where they're like, I wonder what Britney's relationship is like with her father. I was like, I don't know, bitch, let's call him. And then, like, you know, and it's just like, I think that's such a funny, like, it's such a great conversation to be had. But, like, the irony is that my dad's just like, I hate what you do on the internet, but, like, props for making money. I was like, thanks, dad. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I have a great relationship yeah. with my dad. He's, like, my best friend. But at the same time, I understand that in their stereotype of dads, they might have shitty dads that don't talk to their girls because, you know, and that's why they had to go to OnlyFans. I get it. Daddy issues is a thing. I think I had more mommy issues growing up, though, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, and I think people yeah. forget about that. I also am rebelling against my mother. It's not just oh, about my that's dad. Difficult. That's hard. Oh, okay. That's hard. Moms are way more critical mother. than dads. Mm-hmm. Like, dads just, like, get grumpy about it and don't talk to you. Mom's, like, my mom puts me on blast. All the- you know what my mom said to me? Because my partner is foreign, uh, you know, even though she's an immigrant, but she's like, is he, is he only marrying you for your green card? I was like, no. And I was like, and now that I'm moving to Europe, she's even more like, OK, with it. Because she's like, OK, so he's not trying to be an American. I was like, not everybody wants to be an American, ma'am. But she in particular, my mom dragged me, girl, when I told her about him. My mom goes, Betsy, what does he want with an old lady who has an autoimmune disorder, who's dying and going bald? And she's like, she's like, what, what does he want with you? And I was like. I was like and i was like mom yeah. you should go on fresh and fit mom you should go on fresh and fit yes <laughs> but like the truth is she's kind of right what does some guy want with some girl and i tell him all the time i was like are you aware that i have medical problems i have a mental illness as well like yeah it is a big deal but that's why the love will stay strong and true because he's in love with my consciousness even if i'm exactly. sick and you can't explain it you can't you know? explain it yeah, it's like with red pills, like, you know, oh my God, she like wears a weave or she wears a wig. And it's like, well, you know, but there may be somebody out there who's like, okay with that. Literally. Who knows why? You know, it's it's really, it's not that simple. Yeah. It's really like, it's, it's a whole thing. I don't think they it fall really in love. Is. Like I'm a romantic. So I want to fall in love. I want to meet the, like, like that person. Yes. Oh, that, me too. Me you know, too. like I want to yeah. be with the person who really like romanticizes and like, and again, not in a toxic way, but in a wow, we really, like, we're going to do life together. Like, we're really going to do yes. it together. Like, you know those guys that are like, um, oh, yeah, I, I go to my guy friends for my feeling stuff, and then my wife doesn't get any of it? I'm like, I would feel what? deprived. I would feel, <laughs> yeah. my parents, though, are very, they talk to each other. My dad doesn't confide in his male friends. He only, he confides in my mother, and vice versa. Mm-hmm. Like, they talk to their friends about stuff, sure, but they really ultimately come to one another. 
Mm -hmm. Because they really created their own bubble together. Yes. Like you said, like theirs was a love marriage. Like yes. after your mother got a divorce. Yes. Wow. Marriage. You yeah. really listen yeah. when I talk, so, girl. I appreciate you. I appreciate yeah, you. <laughs> I appreciate yes. you. Yes. True. Yeah. They're yes. in a really beautiful love marriage. And I just like, yeah. I told my mom, I was like, this is your fault. I'm marrying this man in Europe because I'm in love with him. And like, I saw you do what you did for dad. So you think I'm not going to go across the ocean for a man. You think I won't yeah. do it. I'll do it right now, girl. And it's all because yeah. of her. Like she's got to like, She's got to be on. And it also, she's ultimately the reason I also left my last relationship fully because I saw my mom try to make it work with somebody. Well, I didn't see it, but I heard stories about her trying to make it work with her first husband, the arranged marriage. Mm. And this woman, it was just like they were it was so bad. And so I'm like, this could be my life and I don't want this to be my life. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I, I'm about to go oceans, girl. You please. Yes. <laughs> Please, girl, I'm ready. I'm ready. I didn't wait 33 years and be picky as fuck for three years just to say, you know what? If I don't pick this man, I told my mom, if I don't pick this man, I deserve to be alone for the rest of my life. He is exactly mm -hmm. what I asked for in the universe. And I know you guys can't see it because he doesn't look like the masculine man everyone thought I would end up with, but he's better. He's so much mm -hmm. better. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. I'm so excited. I'm so happy for you. Thanks. I really am. I really Thanks. am. Thanks. I honestly yeah. like I I can't and I can't explain like how good of a person he is unless I give away all my like medical history and all my problems. But like he genuinely is just like a really warm and good person. And I think that's so yeah. underplayed like Myron and Fish Fresh and Fit or whatever. They don't understand how valuable it is to have a kind partner. They're just so convinced that these girls will just take what they can get and they'll give them scraps or whatever and I'm just like I don't want your money, bro. And maybe it's because I make money that I'm like, what good is your money? What good is it if I'm going to come home every night crying and you're not going to be there to, like, console me and watch anime? Like, what's the point? What's the point? Exactly. And I yeah. just think, you know, when they get old and nobody cares about them and, you know, nobody cares about fresh and fits and the whole brand and the whole, like, sort of bubble that they have, who's going to care? Yeah. Like who's going to care for you? Who's going to who's going to be there not like caring for you, but who's going to be there validating your humanity and your mortality and, you know, the fact that you're on the edge of death, you know? <laughs> who's going to be there with you for that? And I think that's <clears throat> I think because of like, I don't know, just everything like plastic surgery, just the mm. internet, you can sort of make your own image, everything, just you know, God is dead, we've given yeah. up on God. We don't really confront that sort of, you know, we put all our old people in old age homes, you know, it's sort of, we don't have to deal with that. But at some point, we're going to have to, yeah, like, at some point, we're going to be 90 year olds with beats. And, you know, we're going to have to figure things out. Yeah. And I think that's going to be tricky, very, very tricky for a lot of us. Um, I just thought of something yeah. when you were talking, do you think that Oh, I just realized, is this like a bubble thing I didn't process until now? Is Fred, because I forgot, like, um, I don't identify as like a YouTuber. Like okay. my job isn't very much attached to my identity. It's just something I do. But I, you, because I always struggled with this. Like, <clears throat> I feel like Mr. Beast and Logan Paul and them, they're YouTubers and they really love yes. that. Fresh and Fit, their brand, I wonder if they're more attached to their brand so there'll be like 90 year old guys be like, look, guys, this is what I'm trying to tell you. And like they're, they're going to still be doing it at 90 because if they can keep the brand alive, then that might be enough to actually bring them quite a lot of joy. But if the brand Ooh. disappeared, where would they be? Versus if me, I know if I lost everything today, I'd be like, cool, new Britney starting from scratch. If not YouTuber, what? Like it's just about money and also like what do I find joy in? Like this is the job I chose because it's the easiest because it's the place where I'm happy every day doing it. Mm -hmm. I get cranky yes. about it sometimes where I'm like, oh my God, my OBS isn't working and the tech's not working and I'm out. I just like have a heart yeah. attack. But in general, it is the only place I can be consistently pretty happy. That's why I do it. Yes. But what if yes. it disappeared? I know I'd be fine. But would they be fine? If they're if they were never allowed to stream again, <sighs> anywhere, not even on Rumble, I don't think they would. No. I wonder if that's the key difference. Is like if um, yeah, I just don't think it's that important to my joy. No, I think a key, I think a key tenet of their bubble, of their, of just everything, of their opinions, their beliefs, is having that audience 
is having yeah. that audience, that virtual audience of people who are looking for the answers that they're going to give them and the explanations for why their life isn't going the way that they want their life to go. They Can need that. Um, and I think without that, there's nothing. There's no fresh and fit. Um, I worry about them yeah. now. If they were my brothers, I'd be worried about them. I I do worry about like people like they're my siblings. I'm like, hey, hey, just so you know, like in case this whole goes to shit, I hope you're going to be OK. You know, people kill themselves like men kill themselves when their careers yeah. end or when their wives leave. Like and that has to be for a reason. I was even telling my partner he's such a romantic. Oh, my God. But I told him I was like, I love you so much. But if you died, though, I would be devastated. Uh, I think I'm going to be like my aunties and, and my grandmas who are just like, yeah, bro, husbands die. Like, because in some way, like, that's just the realities. I can't crumble because my partner dies. People's partner dies. They die. People die. So, yes. like, I can't end my life. Yes. But then for some people, they just, they are not prepared. And I know it's going to be a big deal. I know it's going to be awful. Um, But it also is, like, so a part of life. Again, maybe that's me zooming out into the macro too much. But I'm like, look, people die. We cannot literally, like, commit suicide because people die. Like, we need to be much more functional than that. But maybe that's also me casting judgment on the idea of, like, again, I need to know I'm good by myself. So also people have the right to leave mm -hmm. and go. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want people to feel like, like, I tell my sister this, too. Like, I love her and we're in her circle. But if she ever feels like truly being around me isn't facilitating her joy, I fully expect her to explain that to me and then go on her own journey. Mm -hmm. And then hit me up when she feels more comfortable. But like, how could I betray her consent by saying I should matter so much in your life that if you need to leave me, I'm going to kill myself. You know, it feels like a threat. Mm -hmm. So I try really hard not to do that. And I wonder if Fresh and Fit or even the, do you know the show The View? Like the American show? Like yes, the, okay. yes, yes. Oh, yes. I used to yes. watch them all the time. Literally, girl. And then I one day I woke up and I was like. Why am I watching this? Like, why did I even think I needed to hear these opinions? They're just all like, we should start a YouTube show. Me, you, Kyla, and Destiny, because he's a girl. And like, oh, we'll yes. all start a panel where it's like we all give our talking points. We're literally, I'm like, okay, you're this person, you're this person, and we can only talk in those talking points. I wish people could see how dumb they all look, but also how reasonable they all look, because that's what people want from them. Fresh yes. and Fit give the perfect talking points for their audience to feel reassured. So it's a it's a constant loop of symbio like symbiosis. Like they are yes. is that a word? Like yes, they are literally in flow together because they're giving each other what they need. Yes, exactly. Man, that exactly. high must be amazing. I've always been at odds with my audience sometimes, and I also heavily love when they criticize me. So I wonder what it would be like to have a yes team for your. What if your audience was a yes audience? Oh my goodness! Wow. I've, I've never imagined that. I could never imagine. <laughs> I never had that. Maybe that's why YouTubers do the general populist YouTube so they can get the yes audience. Yes. I feel that that's, that has a lot to do with a lot of the appeal of the tribes. Holy fuck. Definitely. I never even thought about it that way. Like, I you know, it is, it is the relationship, it's reinforcing your reality and what they need from yeah. that reinforcement. And it's just, it's, it's sort of a perfect rela relationship, but it's also like a prison. Totally. Oh my, you're, Everyone. you're, what do they call it? You're a slave to your audience. Yes. Yes. I could never, and I would And they're sort of a slave to, to the perpetual state that they're in mm -hmm. and don't really get out of that or like sort of think actually critically about that and themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yes, I think it's, it's a sort of prison, two different prisons, but still prisons. Yeah. Uh, I think I wonder because, you know, they're all the fresh and fit guys are always like, go ahead, Brittany, then go on their show. And I was like, I don't go on shows where I have to like. I, I get frustrated having to move too much in a bubble, and I think I'd have to go really heavy into their bubble. And I think that Destiny is much better at that than I am. But um, mm. you know how they're always criticizing women for having like, yes, girlfriends, like girlfriends who only reinforce bad behavior in you. I'm like, yeah, mm. but your audience is doing that. But not really because like, OK, they're the same as OnlyFans girls. All these men are OnlyFans girls or they want to be women because they think women have an easier life. Women want to be men. I hate everybody. Okay, so everyone wants to be everybody else. But you know how, like, and I'm sorry, tell me if I'm keeping you at all, but now I'm having, like, this thought. No, 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 no. Continue. Okay, so, like, an OnlyFans girl could stay in shape, make money, have a Bugatti, and be like, that's why OnlyFans is good. Fresh and Fit could say, yeah, but you're still on OnlyFans. But I look at Fresh and Fit, I'm like, you're in shape, you have a Bugatti, you're, like, all these things, that's great, 
but you're still fresh and fit. It's like, I want them to understand like the way fresh and fit looks at OnlyFans girl. I look at kind of both of them where I'm like, this cannot be your whole identity. Mm-hmm. It can, but I, I don't think joy, real life, long joy is found in things that could be destroyed when the economy changes. Exactly. If OnlyFans exactly. crashes because it's a company, where's your identity? If YouTube crashes because it's a company, where does your identity go? If it disappears yeah. based off of how culture changes, I wonder if we could realize that our identities could stand the test of time, which goes back to the idea of like, I think it was Preach. I could be wrong, but I think it was an Abba and Preach video. And I think it was Preach who said something like, oh, my wife doesn't say the N-word. You know, she's white. And a part of me was like, do you mean ever? Like even in sentence, even if you guys are talking about grammar, like ever? Like I couldn't imagine never saying a word. Like what does that mean? Mm -hmm. Do people literally go their whole lives without saying a word? Or do people mean, oh yeah, she wouldn't use it. It's not part of her vocabulary. She's white. Or does it mean I married a person and this person can never say this word? Because like I can't imagine marrying someone and not in the privacy of our homes and the safety of our bubble being like, why do you think people have a problem with the F slur? And then just saying, we wouldn't say F slur. Yes, exactly. Because exactly. like, we're not on the internet. Like we would just talk. Because like, exactly. you know what I'm saying? So I think yeah. I look at the world and I wonder if they know, like, could you imagine being in a relationship? I assume you've been in one maybe where like the politics trumps the relationship. Yes. Like, do you where know the what prison I'm saying? of the outside world yes. comes into your home. Yes. Like, why are you in my relationship? Yes. You're not dating me. Exactly. That's the world. Why are we bringing it into our exactly. relationship? That's why I always say the personal is not political. Don't make mm. it political. Don't, don't, don't do that. Mm-hmm. No. That's mm. a construct in and of itself. Totally. So Keep interesting. That, no. Because that just, that just destroys everything. Mm-hmm. I mean, why would you want, politics is misery. Why totally. would you want to bring that misery into the most important relationships that you have into your private your actual safe space you know your your own personal curated bubble your home the people who you love for them that you can't really explain to anybody else that you don't have to explain to anybody else right that's just it baffles me that's why i say i'm not political because that's what i care about i care so much about the private sphere, that private, that place where I can be me. Yeah. It's so important. So and it's important. Just, I can't, I don't know. It's probably my fault. I can't communicate this well because in saying this, people are just always telling me, oh no, you actually are political or like, you're just a conservative because if you say that you're not political, then like you're this, that, That's like other, a dog and, whistle know, for okay. like libertarians or some shit or some exactly. conservative yeah, bullshit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. It's like when, yeah. I have conservative yes. family members that go, um, I'm not a Republican, Brittany. I'm a conservative. I was like, oh, my God. Do you have you ever voted for anyone other than a Republican? And they're like, no. And I was like, OK, like I get it. <laughs> it's the same way I say I'm a Democrat or not a Democrat because I've never been a registered Democrat, but I vote Democrat. Yeah. So, OK, for all it like for all it depends on how we view these realities again. I think like this is what's so amazing about picking and choosing your own bubbles and saying like, look, I'm going to visit. I love you guys. This is great. I love going to this bubble. Like I love my gay bubbles. I love my feminist bubbles. But man, I can't live there anymore. Imagine you're in bed with the love of your life and you're like, oh, you're such a dirty little slut. And it's like, oh, babe, because of the patriarchy, would you mind like actually not using that language? Because it like, uh, and it'd be like, bro, like I don't want my politics to be oh in the bedroom. Yeah. But I also want it to be, I know my partner so well. He's so safe. They're so safe. I never have to worry that if he's saying something in the privacy of our home, it reflects some deep, dark philosophy or political idea he has that he hasn't told me. Now, we're unorthodox in that way. We're like super transparent people, mostly because our anxiety spikes the moment we think someone's like not feeling safe enough to be honest. And so we're like, what did we do? What should we do? What do we like? What happened? Is there like, is that because that's what you hear in relationships? You hear like the number one reason people like end up separating is either a lack of communication, children, finances, sex. Why like all all of those things are communication. Mm -hmm. Something went wrong in the communication. So we go pretty aggressive with the transparency. But again, Mm -hmm. it's supposed to be not only I know this person is good. So we have established that foundation. But then now that we've established it, everything they say afterwards should be taken in like good faith and then we should dissect it, which is, again, why when people leave over politics, I get my heart broken because I'm like, I'm, I'm a good person. Exactly. I, I try really yeah. hard to be a good person. Like, I promise you, I don't yeah. have like these internal thoughts you think I'm having. Yes. 
Exactly. Yeah. It's so it strange. stresses me <laughs> as well. Yeah, that's that's something. It really it does get to me. It really does. Yeah. Yeah. It hurts my but feelings. But I also have to like get to that point of like, okay, that's their bubble. That's their reality. Yeah. That's how they see things. And I have to, you know, you have to just it's always it's a contradiction and it's it can be vexing, but it's also <sighs> That is life. That, that is the human is condition. Life. And so it's, yeah. yeah. Humans yeah. are going to human for real, real. And again, I'm not saying anything exactly. I say ever to dismiss the reality of our struggle. Like everyone struggles. I think mm -hmm. it's to give yourself comfort. Again, the levels are for you as an individual. They're not for people. They're supposed to remind you you're okay. That is how they are, which means you get to, write, to be how you are and it's okay. In the same way, because if you start demonizing them, that's why they feel justified in demonizing you because you're running yes. into that same idea that everyone should be like me. Everyone, No, everyone should be like themselves. And hopefully, mm -hmm. even though we're different, we can get along somehow. Yes. Because it's yes. not going to be perfect. And not everybody, like I don't fall into this like woo-woo bubble that's like everyone deserves love. Like everyone deserves nothing probably because like we're animals evolved on a planet i don't know what that means to deserve anything like again i don't know why i don't i can't i can't go back to thinking i deserve something but i mm -hmm. will say that in a relationship i think i should get what i've negotiated for and what i've consented for yeah and i should have what i've consented um too and i think that that's my goal is to say i hope you consent to this relationship with me i want to consent to it with you and i want us to consent every day like hey did we change anything today no great same old, same old. But I don't want to mm -hmm. wake up in 30 years and look at my partner and not know who they are. And I think that's my responsibility. Yes. Yes, definitely. And I think that's all you can ask for sort of yeah. in terms of with that person. You can't ask that of the world and other people. Like that's. Yeah. I just don't know the world that way. That does not work. And yeah. I don't want to make assumptions. Now that I'm traveling to Europe, I'm very excited to see how people will treat me. When I went to his country originally, um, not very many people speak English. So I'm going to mm -hmm. be learning a second language. But um, people were pretty nice. They thought it was pretty interesting that I was there. And they didn't seem any which way about it. So I think I'll have a good time. But maybe I go to a European country and somebody really hates me for being American. That would suck. Yeah. But it's possible, right? I think a lot of people around the world don't quite like the USA, maybe. So yeah, I'm sure I'll meet yeah. those people along the way. But how exciting. Like, I, I really have never done anything like this. So I'm going to bubble hop like a bitch right now. Like, I've never bubble Incredible. hopped like this. Like, I've always been in the US, basically, and had international callers. But I'm, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. But it also scares me. Um, mm -hmm. I wonder if I'll be more understood by Europeans or less. I'm interested in that too. I think it will be very important for your generic Europeans to actually experience an American that isn't just a stereotype of what an American is and what America is mm. to actually face an actual American and actually see, oh, okay, this is a human being just like me. Mm. I think that's very important because I think at least we all have those stereotypes of what people are from where they come from. And then when we actually confront them as individuals who don't actually represent America or a country or a flag yeah. or a politics, yeah. then it's like, oh, hold on. Like we actually have a lot more in common just on our base level of things than, you know, I would have otherwise thought. And I think that's, that reckoning is so important just for all of us. Yeah. And um, like I found that when I was working in a grocery store, like because it's international city, so many different people. And it's like, you know, apparently, according to like the UK and everything, you know, China is like this terrible place with very oppressed mm. people. I'd interact with like individual Chinese people. They just people. Right. <laughs> you know, right. <laughs> so it was like, oh, uh, OK. Yeah. Wow. That completely like fucks with my reality and my perception of like the world and, you know, good and bad people, good and bad politics, good and bad, whatever. And it's like, okay, we can actually, we can actually get from A to B together. You know, I can actually have a conversation with you. I can actually give you your groceries. You give me your money. It's fine. We go on our merry days, whatever. Yeah. And I think that's, that's important to confront that. Yeah. Um, because you... sometimes we get so caught up in these tropes. Sorry. No, no, go. I interrupted you. Oh yeah. I was just saying we get so caught up in these tropes and these stereotypes that they override everything else the people mm -hmm. that like are actually there like sort of in a way just by living and existing like uh continuing the stereotypes so it's um yeah it's interesting 
I'm yeah. I'm curious because I, I I don't think humans are that complicated, but I think like life is hard. And I think that mm-hmm. things are complicated because we don't always have the tools. But once we have the tools, everything becomes clear. So I think that mm-hmm. the complicated part is the journey of gathering the tools to come to a, mm-hmm. a, a place of like confidence and action. Um, mm-hmm. But human interaction is pretty basic. Like I've never met you. I've never talked to you, but like we're doing fine. And like, I don't know if it's because we've seen each other's content. So that makes it easier. But I feel like mm-hmm. I have this everywhere I go. But for the most part, like you said, like money goods switch that's basically universal everywhere right like people being sad or happy it's like people experiencing life love loss like universal but then the details are not and that's where the bubbles come in where it confuses everybody because everyone goes well if we're all living and loving and laughing then we should all come to this conclusion i'm like "Er, these conclusions like these Mm -hmm. this basis of just being alive lends you to all different kinds of being alive and so that's Mm -hmm. what i want for people to understand now i have two more questions for you and then i I'll probably have 20 more, but I might even let you go. I don't know. Like, I keep wanting to ask you things. Like, okay, so um, I'm sure you've heard me ask this to other people or maybe even talk about it. I think existing is like you, Z, me, Brittany, existing, right? We are existing. And then everything outside of each other. So you to me and me to you is existence. So I want to ask you, what is your favorite part about existing? Oh, my favorite part about existing Oh, that's a difficult one. I change all your mind questions all the time. have to be difficult, but this is oh <laughs> wow. Oh. At the moment, I don't know. I think. A few years ago, I had this great connection with somebody and it was like, whenever we were intimate, like had sex, it was like, it was like we became one. Mm. And that for me, it was like, oh my gosh. Like, it was like this weird thing that wasn't just like physical. It was like this, not even just physical and emotional. It was like almost like, this sounds very melodramatic, but sort of philosophical in a way. Like I was like, ah this makes sense like this is this is why I'm here this is why I exist Mm. for like this experience for this Mm -hmm. actually really being face to face with the consciousness like the real consciousness of somebody and having like actual confirmation that somebody else does exist because when I'm just like in the world it's like oh I just have to assume that everybody else has consciousness like me you know sort of like the um beetle in a box or the yeah. bug in a machine that sort of yeah. like thing you know it's sort of I don't actually know that you're conscious and that you're actually really here but I have to just go with it just for survival you know yeah it's not like I've chosen to and just like in that moment just being with that person it was like I I know like I know that this this is real so yes I would say that that yeah yeah. I'm going to ask now, you I'm going to ask you if what you're describing is what I would say my favorite thing right now about existing is, which is like living in the most present. Mhm. Because it's not like I don't think for me it's like what we're doing, it's being so in the present either with myself or somebody else where it's like we are really living right now. Yes. We're not lost in the sauce of the future. We're not worried about the things going on here. We're in this moment right now. And that's really hard to do. It takes a lot of like, it's actually like, I feel like it takes a lot of spoons to just wipe away the world to just live in a moment. Yes. Is that what you're describing or is it something different? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Like you're not thinking about the past and you're not thinking about the future. You're not thinking about, oh, my rent or I'm going to die. Like right. it's like now, that's all that matters. And yes. you're just fully in that. I think if and humans- especially when you're with someone. Yes, you know? when you're with someone. I think if human beings genuinely experienced living in the present for even like, I can only hold it for so long. I actually get, I can't hold it. Like I get mm-hmm. right away, the intrusive thought comes in and it's like YouTube, your analytics, boom. And I'm like, fuck. And like all of a sudden I'm out yes. of it and I'm like, oh my God. But when I'm like in the genuine present, that's why I like being alone so much because I can hit it harder and faster mm-hmm. and like more frequently. 
when I'm with my partner, I seem to be able to do it. But like with other people, there's always sometimes it happens. and You're like, oh, this is magic, which is why I know my inner circle was chosen because they're people who could live in the present with me. But it's not all the time and it's not always cohesive. It's like a real we both have to work at it. You like, you know, when you're having a conversation with someone and you could tell like their thoughts are wandering. That's OK. Yes. Oh, That's yes. human. Yeah. I do it all the time. Yeah. But there's something about a conversation where like we are in it. And there is yes. nothing else important about this moment. And I'm just like, holy mm-hmm. fuck. Like, that shit is so good. But, again, that's why I like being by myself because I can hit it faster, harder, and more frequently. The second question. Mm-hmm. What is your favorite part about existence? Hmm. I'd say... I'd say faith, I guess, mm. having to have faith okay. in faith in the not knowing and also faith in other people. Okay. And like that. that's really difficult because there's no certainty, there's no reassurance. But when it works out or when you have that faith and you just follow through with it, it can be really so meaningful, so impactful. It can really just make it all seemed worthwhile. Yeah. Um, even if not like for the whole journey of life, but in that moment for a while, it can be like, yes, okay. Like you've actually, this disproves like sort of everything, like all the reason of, you know, like everything like set in stone about human beings and da 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 da. So almost like, like I think uh, that is, is it faith in the no faith in the mystery of knowing or faith in the adventure or faith in the knowing that there's a, something else out there than what I'm seeing it is like, it, is it the faith in the bigger picture? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Faith in the bigger, fi- in the bigger picture and okay. faith in just, I think faith in other people as well, especially because yeah. that is so, so difficult. And, uh, at least for me, it's something that's very, very difficult to do. But then doing that, taking that that leap, yeah. that's very important, uh, very important to me. Um, yeah. So I'd say I'd say faith. Um, yeah. Yeah. Ooh, that's an interesting one. I don't think anyone's ever said that one before. That's fun. Because, like, existence is such an interesting and vast thing. It's hard to pick one thing. And I know my nose shifts, but it's definitely, like, my inner circle. I always get – or even, like, friends and family I connect with, I do become obsessed with, like, even their lives. That's why I'm, like – I'm one of those people who's definitely, like, happy for other people's happy. Usually. As long as they're genuinely mm-hmm. happy. If I can't for some reason process a choice and I don't get it, I might have a hard time actually being happy for people. Um, Mm -hmm. which I struggle with immensely. Like I'm trying to get better at it, but I have a theory that if I can't see a certain thing, I won't be able to. And it's not something I can Mm -hmm. logic because logically I get it. I I get everything logically. That's not hard. Like it makes sense why people do things, but emotionally, empathetically, I can't in my body celebrate it because I don't get it. But if I get it, then it's like, oh my God, that's my favorite thing is like, I love being happy for other people because it also mm-hmm. in some ways, like one less person who is unhappy. And I think society is full of really unhappy people right now. And I oh, think the world yeah. would just like, if it could heal itself slowly, it'd be really great, but it has to start with people. And so like, that's just what's so hard. It starts with us. And so it's so mm-hmm. difficult to be okay. Like, like sometimes I have callers from all over the world and I'll tell someone I have a caller from X place or X place or this place. And they'll be like, oh, you talk to people from X place. Like, are you worried? I was like, oh, I never thought about that before. Why would I be worried? Because it's just an individual. Mm. It's one person. What am I afraid exactly. of? You know, it's just one person. And they're coming to me because they must humanize me and see a part of me. So mm-hmm. no, I'm not assuming anything. I'm not, I'm giving them good faith because I also don't think like being from a place matters too much. I think it could matter with a stereotype, but outside the stereotype, it can't matter too much. Yeah. Right? Yes. Like I'm American. Yeah. So my stereotype should be oh, when I get to America or Europe, I'm sure they're going to ask me something. I'm like, hmm. And they're going to be like, oh, Americans. <laughs> and I'm sure that's going to be a stereotype I fit into. But then when I mm-hmm. don't fit into the stereotype, I hope that gives another person a reason to be like, oh, not all X or this. Mm hmm. Because, like, we're not really monoliths out here. You know what I'm saying? So, anyways, one experience at a time should give you a part of a tool or a whole-ass tool at a time Mm -hmm. to, like, 
be able to see the puzzle clearly. What's that thing? My partner does it. It's a game online, guys. What's this game online where like you do a puzzle thing and like it becomes a picture after a while, but as you're working on it, like you can't quite see what it is. That's what life is like. Okay. And until you solve by getting all the tools, you're not going to know what the photo is. That's the end of my monologue. Okay. I need to find out what this game is. That's I don't know very, what it is. That's a very good. It's a good image. I don't know it's what it is. It's something like he does, that. but like he fills in the the puzzle, and then as you fill in the puzzle, it reveals a part of the picture, and then the picture becomes like a picture. I don't know what it is, but he does it while I watch him sometimes. And I'm just like, oh, that's a really great metaphor for life. Like, that's my problem is I don't play games or I don't like them very much, but I like to use them Mm -hmm. to like, how do I translate this to people? Yeah. 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 I don't know what it's called. Everyone's like Wordle, Zodoku, Jigsaw Puzzle. I don't know what it's called, guys. It's something on the internet. I don't know. Now, um, (laughs) I'm going to throw it to you one last time because basically where I'm at is that I need to pee very badly. But otherwise, Mm -hmm. I thought I would take some like Discord calls and talk to them after for a bit. I don't like to leave my streams just right after I collab. So I want to make sure that I have time for them, spoons wise. But for you, do we need any more time together? Do I need to contemplate more spoons for you? Which has been lovely. I haven't even, I don't even know if I've lost any. (laughs) It feels really good. It does. It feels good. It feels good. It's feel, it feels very good. I would, if you'd like, I'd love to talk at another point. Definitely. Yes. Because this is just, I needed this. I oh, needed good. this. good. I'm so <laughs> glad. You're so warm so, and lovely. And I'm so glad we could get past me, like, like going at you over Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. But I'm so glad we're here now. Well, it was actually you and the levels that helped me get past that. So, oh. you know, it was <laughs> like that. <laughs> Oh, I love that so much. Yes, I love that so much. Hit me up anytime, girly. Literally, if I'm ever streaming too and you're bored, like call, like just talk. Okay. Like hit me up if you're like, hey, I don't like what you're saying right now. Like hit me up. That'd be even better. But yeah, I'm available to you. My DMs are open. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Like really, this is incredible. Like honestly, like it was amazing. I can't believe it. Like uh, Kyla, uh, not the erudite one, is to speak to me. I was like, oh my gosh, like girl. Yes. I was like, oh my gosh, like what? What is I, happening? When I but, saw yeah, that, I incredible. never clicked so fast in my life. I was like, I was like, two of my favorite girls together. Let's go. I was so excited. No, that's what I love so much about YouTube, though. Is like, I hope that that literally right when I saw you on Kyla, I was like, wait a second. If she's gonna talk to Kyla, she'll talk to me. Like she'll talk to anybody. Like it, like because Kyla hangs out with me, so she must not hate this part of YouTube. That's what I did. I was like, oh, she talks to Kyla, and Kyla likes me. Then she'll hopefully talk to me because like now we're in the same group hopefully yeah and then look it happened (laughs) yes it did yay I'm so excited I'm so happy me too literally please hit me up and if we're ever in the places like in the same places around the world like in Europe at any time let's get coffee yes definitely it'd be lovely all right girly thank you so much thank you so much for having me okay talk to you soon take care bye bye Bye. In my head, in real life while I'm dead My belly's being fed and I'm okay I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah Sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Then